ギアーえー、あのギアーバグされるのを無線いろんなプレゼントがあっちもよあっちもよEverybody to the LCK 2021 Spring Playoffs presented by Rebank. I am here, Valdez, with Chronicler to bring you Damwon Kia up against Hamalite Esports. It is going to be a huge matchup to decide who makes it into the LCK Finals this time around. And who is it going to be? The best team in the world, or one man with a dream? That's kind of <laughs> that's kind of what we're getting into here today. Yeah. Because uh, on paper, Damwon Kia have looked. Maybe not as dominant as their summer run, but still, as a whole, just unmatched within the LCK. Yeah, it certainly does feel that way. Uh, we haven't seen this team play just yet in playoffs. This is going to be our first time this split, of course, to see how they look in a best of five against a great team on the big stage after their incredible Worlds run, where, of course, they were able to take the title. So. As you did see here, guys, they chose Hanwha Life Esports after the results of round one. T1, of course, did defeat DRX to move on as well. Genji will have to face them tomorrow. But today is all going to be about Damwon Kia up against Hanwha Life Esports. And everybody is saying, yes, Damwon Kia, an incredible all around team up against Chovy and his gang. Who will take the cake tonight? And. This is more of a return to early split Hanwha Live that we've seen with him. Because I actually felt like as we moved further and further into the split, the rest of the team was really coming into its own. Uh, but then in the playoffs, specifically that grueling series that went all the way against Nongshim, it was very clear that there was one man who actually was able to drag them over the finish line. And that's, I think, not going to be good enough. The rest of the team needs to show up here today as well. Everybody needs to be on point. Um, it'll be interesting to see as well what kind of roster we see for Hama Life. I thought that Arthur coming in kind of like blank of old days and, uh, you know, saving the team in game five was pretty interesting. Here are the casters' predictions for tonight. Literally every single person is voting for Dalmon Kia. And honestly, I don't think that should be too much of a surprise. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. We like to have, you know, some opinions. Uh, we like to have different opinions, preferably. And I think tomorrow we'll definitely have them because the, the series tomorrow is one where you could argue both ways. But here, especially because Nongshim, which is a team that was cool to see to make it into playoffs, but they were weaker, right? They were a considerable level away from the rest. And just yeah. see Hanwha Life struggle that much. And then having to take on Damwon Kia of all teams. Again, they won Worlds. Yes, Nogari is gone, but Khan has been an incredible replacement. and. Uh, it's a rough one. It is rough, and it uh, it only gets rougher for Hamalai Esports. We have the fan vote, and you guys will get to see exactly what the fans are thinking. It's 76% to 24%, so basically 3 to 1 there. And, uh, you know, now updated at 450, by the way, so we went right down to right before we started. And uh, I think some people, you know, the Hamalai Life Esports fans, the Chovy fans as well, are banking on a miracle performance. And don't get me wrong, if Chovy turns up and literally carries his team across the line against Damwon Kia, I mean, let's start actually thinking about the Bones Watch here. I mean, we shouldn't give it to him yet, but this could be the beginning of a new Chovy dynasty if he begins to be able to do stuff like that. Unfortunately, uh, as, as I said before, there's a reason why everyone is favoring Damwon Kia, uh, because even though they had 
had a downside left and right, right? They, they weren't in perfect form all split. When push comes to shove, the team just always feels completely in control. And if you're in control, one guy playing super well, even if it is Chovy, it's not going to be enough. Yeah, takes five players to make the dream work. And guys, we do have the points of the match ready, so let's hop into that. Yet another awesome video to bring us through uh, this matchup here. So let us jump on in. And of course, we will be talking over this about what these two teams do offer to this matchup. I love these videos. Gives us uh, something that we've really naturally been missing all split, which is really a look at the teams, right? How they're doing, how they're feeling. And Domo Kia, I feel like we keep repeating ourselves with how, or singing the praises rather of how good this team is. Because you kind of, it gets boring. But it shouldn't be boring because they're this good, right? Like these win rates when they get leads are incredible. But they are also like the dynasties of all the SKTs where even if they were at the deficit, you always feel like they're a single play away from just outright winning the game. And that's insane. It is pretty insane. And the numbers that we see on the screen are at just, you know, out of this world. And as you mentioned, even last summer was even stronger. Um, we're taking a look here at some of the Hummel Light numbers. Obviously, the player of the game for game number one up against Nongshin was Chovy on his Renekton. The fact that they can flex that, by the way, is something we'll get into later. Chovy here, the Pog for game number three as well, as he popped onto the Silas and hard carried by himself in a lot of that game. Game number five player of the game was actually Arthur, who subbed in for game five. Uh, a decision that we weren't 100% sure was the right one, but he proved us wrong, came in, did not die a single time, and it was his turn to carry. And the pressure that is on the player like that when you get subbed in in game five has got to be intense, but of course, it's about the mid lane here today. It's about Chovy versus Showmaker, and how could it not be? Showmaker, I think, an incredibly strong mid laner, but hasn't necessarily been the main carry for Dammon. That has been uh, Canyon, of course. Yes. But because Chovy is in the game, you have to talk about mid lane. You have to. And I mean, Showmaker's a guy that is also, in his own right, an incredible individual player. I think that he was a bit more popping off last uh, year, but he's certainly still playing very well here, hoping that his wrist is holding up for the playoffs as well. I'm sure a lot of Dumbo fans are hoping for that. Some incredible numbers as well. It's hard not to have great numbers when your team is winning all the time, but uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting matchup here. Chovy up against Showmaker, as we're also getting into some of Chovy's numbers here. And Chovy has a uh, hidden passive that allows him to just um, materialize minions out of thin air and then yes. immediately take them. We haven't quite figured out how he uh, how he does it, you know. It is a uh, we're working on it, but we're trying our very best to build analysis on it uh, you know, on his <laughs> off days, but it hasn't quite yeah. made it and we talk about Chovy as a solo carrier, but this man um, single handedly jungle gaps basically everyone at Worlds and he's just been continuing that throughout the entirety of the L C K splits and there is just yes. no one that can match him ever. It's you insane. you do not beat Canyon in the jungle. If it happens, it is such a weird thing that we have to remark on it. And even the matchup becomes about that because he is so dominant. Yes, Chovy, uh, you know, without him, Hanwha Life would be maybe a seventh place team. Without Canyon, they would not have won the world finals, maybe not even have gone. This guy is insane individually. Even if it's not super flashy, it doesn't matter. He will hard carry the game. And I have, uh, you know, he's got a target on his back. If you're Hamel Life as well, you're going to try to have to shut him down in this series. And take a look at the stats. Well, Dumont's stats, I think, are self explanatory. We don't, as you said, if you win a lot, your stats will be good. Um, but with those five games, there's actually so much of an uptick that we see there uh, for Hanwha Life. Um, smaller sample size as well, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and I think looking at those games says a lot about the form that Hanwha Life was in on those days, and or on that day rather. And today they need to be on better form. I think if you bring what you brought there, even with how good Chovy was playing in that series, even with Aro coming in with, uh, or uh, Arthur coming in with the hero play in the final game, it's just not going to be enough. And 
This is a Hanwha life where I actually had faith in them to kind of ramp up as the split progressed because I felt like Morgan was playing a lot better and getting more consistent. Deft and Vista were able to find reliable kills and then once T1 shut them down, they just haven't looked the same since. Yeah, we were talking about that last day of the regular season, how it might not matter too much, but actually, you know, maybe it got into their heads just a bit. Here's Dom1 Kia. They swapped out Nuggery, they brought in Khan. He has slotted in very nicely and is a very solid part of this lineup. Canyon is kind of the, you know, he, he is the god of the jungle right now. He rules everybody. Showmaker um, definitely was up there on a lot of people's minds in terms of best mid laner. As of right now, probably not, but he's still one of the best and is an incredible player in his own right. Ghost and Barrel. You know, Barrel was doing tons of roaming towards the end of last split. I feel like he's doing a little bit less, and I think that, um, these two guys do need to step it up in terms of their performance compared to the rest of the squad, but still, they are performing pretty well. I think that the team fighting presence is as good as ever, but the laning has indeed taken a hit. Whereas if you look at Hanwha Live, Morgan and Johan both, uh, whether it's Morgan and Arthur, or in this case, Morgan and Johan that will be starting, um, their consistency was getting way better at the end of the split. I thought they were looking less flippy. They were getting really nice situations going in lane. But then in the playoffs, that all just went away. Uh, Chovy, self-explanatory, if you have not <laughs> seen it. This, <laughs> this guy, insane, uh, going to be looking out for what he plays, how he plays it, and how he gets his minions. And then Deft and Vista, uh, as you already pointed out, a bit of a pressure point here, just like for Damon Kia. I think that those need to be, uh, go back to being kind of the um, show another point of consistency for the Hanwha Live lineup because just Chovy is not enough and in the regular split a big part of it Deft was actually super consistent if you can get him on his jinx if you can get him back on his normal form and not get solo killed or duo killed rather 2v2 repeatedly in a matchup where it's not really allowed as we saw last time um, because otherwise it's going to be rough and Ghost uh, and Deft both looking for Sana or Kaiser, even with yeah. the Kaiser specifically, I think, kind of dropping in prior. You can see some of the numbers here. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, Ghost's laning stats, not the greatest. Um, and you can see that Deft's laning stats in their series against Nongshim, you know, he was a little bit invisible in that series. And I think a lot of people are expecting him to step up a little bit more. They're going to need him because, as you mentioned, Jovi can't do it alone. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting. Ghost, of course, has uh, he's shown incredible prowess in some of the picks that he that he does come in here with? But as you mentioned, uh, that can be very heavily contested by the side of Hanwha Life. I think these drafts, especially in a best of five be between these two teams, could get really interesting. As we are going to hop into our first one here for game number one, Domlin have chosen blue side as the higher seed, and the losing team will choose the next. And we are on a patch that we haven't seen Dumont really give anything away with yet. And don't forget, their game, that series that they lost against Gen.G, I felt like they were kind of keeping the cards close to their chest. We saw in the third game that, that they did lose a sign pick into a choke that they knew was there, that had already solo killed Khan. And I think that reluctance might still be here for this first game. I don't expect anything crazy. I expect very conservative draft. Very happy to see the Senna Ben Seraphine indubitably going to follow as well. Um, with the Renekton, as you said, being a flex pick here, banning it makes even more sense than usual. We in the LCK still really raid that pick. This is um, heading towards an Udyr first pick here for Domon Kia with Hanwha Life hopefully banning away the Seraphine. Uh, because otherwise, we have, we have seen what happens, Hanwha Life. Let's not go down that road again. The, the LCK, well, at this point, should have learned. I suppose maybe they could pick it themselves, especially with the Silas ban coming out. They deny Chovy, but also a response to the Seraphine. The Seraphine will get banned here by Hanwha Life, so no first pick of that, and Canyon will hop on to Udi. Yeah, no surprises there. Udi is a pick that, in the hands of Canyon, has shown a ton of impact. Um, also, it's pretty easy to play Udi when most of your lanes are generally winning. And yes. Even against Chovy, I feel like Showmaker's ability to at will get prior in a lane and allow Canyon to go for double scuttles, go for invades, go for aggressive plays is impeccable. As we get a really aggressive answer here from Hanwha Life. It's the Rel and the Olaf. And I like the pick away of Rel from Beryl because Beryl's uh, performance on the champion has been insane. 
and it synergizes really well. But a little bit more augmentation, in my opinion, would be nice. I think that just the Rel Olaf, not quite it. Maybe put Jovi on something like the Orianna, but then Jovi on Orianna, is that really what we want to see in this series no. here? No. I don't think anyone wants so. to see that. Um, this is an interesting pick. It's the Jinx, right? Uh, remember, the Seraphine, or rather, the Senna is banned already. So they're going to have the Senna gone, and you take the Jinx. J Ghost is going to hop onto that one. He hasn't played a game of Jinx yet, but he takes it away from Deft, most importantly. And that's a big one, because we have remarked on Deft's Insane Win rate. If you're not aware, I think it is still 93% over something. Something like that, mid, yeah. Mid-35, mid 40 games uh, over the course of his career. It's insane. You cannot give him Jinx. Even with the Fresh being gone, which traditionally is like kind of a necessity uh, because of the safety that the Jinx requires. And Hanwha Live's draft, yes, um, the Olaf will have to get some stuff done in the early game, but this is very cohesive, right? You have the Rel to go in big, Olaf and Tristana both jump in, and at least in terms of bot lane, Damon Kia have had some inconsistencies, and if Ghost will actually be kind of a liability on this Jinx, then that provides a lot of entries for Hanwha Life to win early, and we haven't really talked about this yet, but I feel like Hanwha Life, they need to win early, because I think there is no team in the LCK right now that can out-macro Damon Kia. If you keep going for trades over the course of a game, eventually they'll always find the winning trade. Whereas if you snowball the early game and close them down before they can actually ramp up to that, it might be your best avenue uh, to a game one victory here. Yeah, I mean, especially over the course of a best of five, um, trying to steal a game away by some early game pressure and stuff like that against Stalman Kia, not a bad idea, at least for one game. If it doesn't work, Maybe you try something else. Maybe sure. you're doomed. You know, we'll have to see <laughs> how the games yeah. go. Of course, a Nocturne ban. After all of the targeting on Tachovi, they're also going to ban away the Nocturne as Lulu just gets immediately locked in. That's, I imagine, a top lane Lulu for Morgan here, and that's a really interesting one. Uh, of course, we also ha also was seen yesterday within the LEC as the Tom Kench gets picked up here. Now, Cool. I was. Oh, I actually kind of like the Tom Kench. I do not like that, um, <laughs> but, but we'll see. Yeah. That makes a lot more sense. I think that into the rail, it makes a lot. It, it's a very strong pick, but Olaf just completely demolishes your Jenna to a point where you're not very happy about it. And Tom Kench, even though seeing Barrel on it kind of hurts, we have seen how dominant Carrier is. As the Lulu is. I'm actually curious as to how that matchup is going to go into the Gnar. I imagine that early on the Lulu can kind of bully him, and then once Gnar gets an item or two, he does a lot more damage and is able to reliably out-trade, but then at that point you want to group up. And the Lulu augments the Olaf. So as a whole, I really like this angle from Hanwha Life. I think that they will have a lot of prior, can now go for the mid lane counterpick into the Victor, something that yeah. will give Chovy a lot of prior. What's it going to be? That's the big question. Everybody's waiting to see. What's the big man in the mid lane going to be playing here? And it's going to be Rise. An interesting choice, actually, to drop down into the mid lane. They needed some kind of heavy AP damage alongside of this comp. Of course, you know, we've seen Lulu in the top lane. It could go mid. I don't think it will, but still a possibility, as it does get swapped to what we are expecting here. If you don't win early game as Humble Life, good luck. You are a... Um Outside of the Tristana, a short-range composition playing into Victor Jinx Tom Kench. That's <laughs> that's that's not playable, yeah. Valdez. But fortunately for Hanwha Life, their mid-game power spike is insane. And if Chovy does get fed, gets accelerated early on, then um, you're going to be able to actually leverage that pressure and take Don Juan Kia out before. The Lulu and the Olaf, self-explanatory, really strong 2v2. Augmenting the Olaf with not just the Rel, but another character that allows him to be faster, be bulkier, get into the backline with more threat, because a Wild Grove on a ragnarok up Olaf is terrifying. Yes. But it is very clearly Hanwha Life. Yes, that Rise, of course, he skills decently well, but into the Rage Advantage on the opposite side and the Tom Kench, I don't think it's going to matter at all. It needs to be happening in the early game here for Hanwha Life if they want to take a win against Zamon Kia. Yeah, they really need to get the, the good foot forward, that front foot, and we'll see <laughs> if it does, uh, if it works out for them. You know, we'll have to hop into this game and see how it goes. Much like Tovi made Bay look silly. I'm curious about this jungle matchup, right? Canyon up against Johan. Can Johan 
survive? <laughs> it's just a very simple question I want to ask before hopping into the series as we are going to hop onto the rift here for the first game of the round two of the playoffs. Damwon Kia up against Hamalife Esports, their choice after seeing the round one matches. So we take a look at the keystones. Nothing too out of the ordinary that Morgan has gone for the face rush, which I quite like against the Ude, and also Khan, if he uh, does try to run you down, gives you a little bit more mobility, of course. Not as much utility or poke power as the Ari would have. And lethal tempo here for Ghost. Um, generally, it's either lethal tempo or Conqueror. I quite like the lethal tempo because it does allow you to get a little bit more done early game. Your damage late game is uh, still going to be as insane as you'd expect on the Jinx. And early on, I want to see where Johan goes, right? Because, as mentioned, he should have Pryo in at least the top and mid lane. Also expecting to be that very much the case in bot lane just through the power of this Tristan RL. And that means that he gets to decide where he goes, what he does. And a double scuttle start into some possible pressure on a Drake would be a great game for them to kind of start off um, their early game snowball. Yeah, they do have to get it done, though. We'll have to see the execution here. And you mentioned this bottom duo, the Tristana Rel. In the first series, we saw between Hama Life and Nomshim. Um, we didn't really see Def doing much. He was put on a lot of short range carries. I feel like he wasn't exactly enabled to the best of their ability. They were obviously focusing on Chovy in the drafts and some of their, you know, top side of the maps picks rather than deaths. And uh, we'll have to wait and see if maybe he can be enabled a little bit more with something like Tristana and the Rel to combo it in the bottom lane. Um, well, that's not great in terms of health bar. And this is, of course, the risk that you run as Rise early on. Um, and you will be able to clear waves very, very quickly once you get a little bit more levels. And uh, you can start bouncing those Qs. Up until that point, though, Showmaker, this early on, um, does have the range advantage, meaning it's uh, fairly easy for him to just poke and poke and poke, not really uh, be traded against. And that in turn means that Achovi needs to be a little bit respectful here early on. That might create some problems here for Jonas. Both junglers are pathing towards opposite sides of the map, so don't expect to see an early um, sc uh, scuttle fight. And this wave can be shoved in, but not really anything going to follow through from that. Yeah, you see the top lane matchup here in the LCK. It's six to two, and Lulu's just really annoying because her poke obviously is pretty insane. The sustain that you can get with corrupting pot and the biscuits, biscuits, one of the most popular runes, if not the most popular, <laughs> at the moment. We see it all the time. Just gives you an insane amount of sustain and ability to stick around in the lane and be very annoying. And that's exactly what Lulu likes to do, especially early on before Nar has too much threat an all-in or anything like that. Jovi going to go for an early back here. Just going to pick up some sustain and a crystal. And Showmaker not necessarily wants to trade, trying to get the lane in a nice position. Not actually able to uh, get the full shove going. Um, but I don't expect Jovi to actually be able to get a lot more out of this. Could possibly keep the lane in a comfortable position here. We'll be trying to do so, but with the teleport available and Canyon also in the general vicinity, shouldn't be a uh, risky move. They're both teleports are now used. Mm -hmm. And if this continues to be a fairly slow early game, um, I think that at some point, Hanwha Live need to try and make some moves. You see the bot lane engage. Yeah, coming on in is Johan as well. Barrel looks to be in a really precarious spot. That's going to be first blood. As we didn't see the beginning of that, but you can imagine how that kind of engage can get going. No flash here on Vista, and still exhaust and flash available on Barrel. He didn't actually use it as he goes down. I want to see how Johan was able to avoid vision there. Um, whether he was able to just sneak by the scuttle and then not get spotted until the engage was already coming through, because I think that Ghost and Barrel kind of felt a safe sense of security that they had a ward in the brush. They had the scuttle secured on the bot side by Canyon. So they were very up, uh, very far up in the lane. The one upside is Ghost doesn't die, right? So Jinx doesn't lose experience, doesn't lose CS. So it's not the worst case scenario, but an early kill for Olaf can really augment the power of that pick. And yeah, it's just a nice play by Yoan. Not getting spotted there. Barrel and Ghost very far up. 
Um, and then once the engage actually comes through, we know how easy it is for Tristan to jump on top of the target. Not a lot to be done there. And that is a uh, nice early start, exactly what we wanted to see from Homo Life. Yeah, and out of that bot lane as well. If you're not getting stuff like that done and Jinx is getting a free lane, you're not really doing your job, right? So able to convert on the kill early on here as Showmaker is going to spot Vista coming on in, but still he is going to be forced to flash away as he was in a little bit of an awkward spot there, kind of stuck between the brush and the minions and is forced to use his flash in that scenario. That's exactly what we're going to see from Hunter Life. Vista uh, initially finding the engage on bot side, now roaming towards mid, forcing a flash down, making any suction to play way stronger. And the early game for Don Monkia really not going well. And this is good for Humble Life. This is what they need to do. This is what they were unable to do in their previous series against Nongshin, which is get early control. And they look a lot more comfortable as a whole. If they can keep this tempo up, can keep getting these objectives, um, they are performing already um, a lot better than I expected. Because again, like it was against Nongshim, right? If it was against a team like Gen G or T1, you might be a little bit kinder to them. But this is a great start, and it is a relevant Drake, because Atlas isn't here today. <laughs> He's busy. I really appreciate Yeah, I don't know that. why this happens every single time, but uh, <laughs> it has kept on, on through the playoffs. This canyon is just being annoying. Not really uh, going to have kill pressure there, of course. Johan picks up the Drake. This is on Vision. Dalman Kian know this is happening. But Morgan's hanging around the top side of the map. So is Chovy. As actually being very annoying here, taking a nice trade against Showmaker as well. This is something that Chovy does, even if he has a hard time early on. His wave manipulation and the ability to take efficient trades just makes life so hard for the enemy mid laner. And here we see the point I was talking about earlier, as uh, that oh, goes in. We're going in, yeah, that's a stun landed as well. On the attract Propel, but Guardian, pretty nice to mitigate a bunch of that damage. Still, it is level 5 for level 6, so Ghost will be playing it very safely. The fact that, you know, there's only the one kill, as actually they're trying to get on in here, but Johan is down on the bottom side again. That's a lot of damage going the way of Barrel, but he just uses that Grey Health to survive. Now Johan in an awkward spot is going to be forced to use that Ragnarok, but he's taking a lot of damage. Not even going to have to use the Ghost, though. So he gets out of there alive. And Ghost and Barrel actually just fine, having some help from Canyon to stave off the pressure. Once they hit level 6, they actually have an ultimate advantage. No Buster Shot available for Tristana, so maybe can look for something there. Uh, but I'm glad you pointed out before we saw that scuffle on the bot side, how um, well Chovy has been utilizing this Rise pick to just Insta clear a wave, which at this point he can easily do, has his, uh, his lucidity boots, has some stacks in his tier, so the AP slowly starts coming through, and also a lost chapter, and then just look for plays. That can be a little trade. We also saw him rotating towards the bot side in case that Domon Kia would overextend, you know, seeing that Ragnarok had been used as Khan. Vista again. This is the Hex Flash coming on in, and Vista just going to be slowed up here. So Khan will be able to respond pretty easily to that rotation. Ghost is also coming up to the top side, so Rift Herald should be given over to Dalman Kia here. And but this is, you lane swap is Humble Life. Um, yeah, that is very surprising to me. I want to see how that was set up, because this is not an objective you're allowed to give up in this situation as Humble Life. You are the team comp that needs a snowball. Yes, you have a gold lead, but giving over a couple of free plates and the tempo from a Herald is really going to hurt you. And it looked like they were ready for it, right? Morgan was already swapped the bot lane. He could teleport in. The top la uh, the bot lane for Hanwha Life was there. Deft and Vista were in position. But still, Domokia just sneak it away from them. Yeah, not sure exactly how that uh, works. But again, Domokia just sneaking away objectives. Hanwha Life not able to keep up, essentially. And that was pretty free. I mean, they, did, they didn't have to do much for it. I think Morgan got a little bit of free farm, but that's not the end of the world. And here we are. It's just a couple of early traded objectives. Homolife got that early Cloud Drake, but the Rift Herald going the way of Dalman Kia. We'll have to see where they want to drop that down. And as you said, Morgan getting free farm means nothing. If Deft and if at the very least Deft would have stayed on bot side, then the Tristana can just free push plates, right? With explosives, so you go through those turrets like a hot knife through butter. But instead, Deft and Vista were topside, didn't actually get anything done, and now we have this lane swap persisting. 
Um, which I guess both teams are fine with, doesn't really change. Uh, but either of them needs to get the shove, get the back in, because the Drake is spawning in about a minute and a half. And I'd imagine, especially Hanwha Life, you want that objective, you need that objective. You need to keep this early game train rolling. And if you just stay in topside here and you let Damwon Kia pick up yet another objective, sure, you have a gold lead, but that's not going to be enough. As you mentioned, you know, you, you have this early gold lead, but you need to ramp it into more. Because if you just sit here on 1,000 gold lead for another 10 minutes, Damwon Kia are probably going to win the game. I mean, Victor Jinx <laughs> is just some insane late game, not to mention just a great team fighting composition in general. You have a lot of safety for your carries as well with the Tom Kench. A good front line. It's going to be hard for Hama Life to compete with that in a straight up team fight later on. So, got to put on the pressure here. We'll see if they decide to do that. But a lot of this top side of the map is controlled here by Dalman Kia, trying to get on top of Vista. As he will be stunned, the Chaos Storm also going to be committed to here, just trying to push them away with only 30 seconds until that Infernal Drake does spawn. That's all you really need to do here. As done with Kia. Oh, well, that was nice. I don't think it would have killed them, but it would have interrupted the back. And yeah. it just buys you more time as done with Kia, right? Um, Shelly getting a little distracted there. Need to make sure she actually goes for the tower. And Will in the very end. Not the optimal people to get the gold on Clum Kench. Uh, and gold is not a combination that I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd personally like to see, but it's, yeah. it's fine, right? And done with Kia. Um, a little bit early on the trigger there. I think if you wait a little bit longer, you use that Herald to simultaneously put pressure at the very least secure more vision in River than you've done now. You feel a little bit better, but this is looking like the call is, guys, we can give up this second Drake, which I tend to agree with. I think this Drake is still fine. However, we're gonna have an Ocean or a Mountain Sword. Both will be incredible for Hanwha Life, especially an Ocean. Don't want to give that up. You just need to make sure yeah. that every subsequent fight for the Dragon, you're in a position to take. And if you look at the spikes, or rather lack there from Damon Kia, no first item for Showmaker, go sitting on merely a pickaxe. Just let them get that info. Yeah, it's a great call. I mean, you, you just moved ahead on gold, right? With this comp that you have, that is a late game scaling comp. So just sit back, let them get a couple of drakes. You're totally fine, you're just scaling. Mid lane here, of course, as it always seems to go, Tovi has found some extra minions. Doesn't seem to miss any. Does a good job of denying the enemy mid laner from some. Dom and Kia, you know, they, they came back a lot on gold because they used that Rift Herald. Khan was getting a lot of uh, free farm down on the bottom side as well. Got a couple of plates to himself, just casually. You know, Morgan wasn't really here to even put any counter pressure on, so. Just a, a nice amount of gold there, given over to Damwon. We're also getting to the point where Morgan doesn't actually win anymore, I say, as yeah. Khan jumps in. This is what's happening. Eventually you have that all-in pressure, but now, Chovy looking to make a play. Gonna get on top of Khan here. There's the root. Do we have the follow-up? Nice dodge by Khan, but he has no way to get out of this one with no flash, no jump. He just has to hold his ground and die, so Tovi with a fantastic roam down to the bottom side. And these are the kind of kills you need as Hanwha Life. You need to keep the tempo of this game high. Force them on Kia to make mistakes. Force them to react to your plays and then go from there. Uh-oh. No wild growth. There is flash available. He is just going to take that one away from Morgan forcibly. Quite like that, you know, a little without flash. Generally, uh a tasty snack if you do get on top of the enemy back line. And as Damon Kia giving up kills like that in of itself, I don't think is the biggest of problems, especially because the kill did go to Morgan, who's gone Moonstone, which means that, yes, um, you know, the skirmishing and team fighting for Humble Life will be really good. But again, it's not give, like giving gold over to Chovy, who I'm pretty sure will just uh, yeah. machine gun rise his way through your entire team, um, no matter who they are. And. This is when I want to see Humble Life take more of these fights, right? You have your Moonstone finished, one item on Chovy, he's got his Everfrost, Deft has got his Berserker Greaves and his Kraken Slayer. Now you want to look, now you want to fight. This is when your Olaf is still really, really strong, especially once he will finish his uh, first item. And this is where as Hanwha Life, you need to break those turrets, right? You need to actually get gold on top of your carries and you need to start setting up more aggressive vision. Because otherwise, the gold lead isn't really there. Um, and that's a problem if this game continues for, say, 10, 15 more minutes. Yeah. 
Canyon putting a lot of pressure on the weak side of Hanwha Life. He's getting right in the face of Morgan, who does not have the flash. They're trying to take that bottom turret. The trade will be for this Rift Herald that Hanwha Life will be able to pick up. And it doesn't look like that one wanted to challenge that objective at all. So we're going to get that. Deft is also getting some nice pressure up on the top side. So just kind of trading towers, but also Hanwha Life to pick up that Rift Herald. My core issue with this is that it does fall into the trap of trying to macro trade uh, with Damwon Kia. Well, like, okay, well, they make a play, we'll make a cross map play. Um, and you're trading even, right? And generally, when you're trading even with Damwon Kia, it starts out as trading even, and then as the game progresses, it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And this is bolstered by the team comms that we see here. So there is very clearly a clock here for Hanwha Life. Um, and I think that if they get this Mountain Drake, if they get themselves the Soul Points, then all of a sudden the pressure on Dunmarkia become much more substantial. And that's where we can we start looking for a little bit more risk taken by Dunmarkia to make sure that they stay uh, in this game and keep away that Mountain Soul from Home Alive. Yeah, and something you mentioned in the draft as well, the range advantage over here to Dunmarkia, we're already beginning to see some of that be abused by Damwon. They're just kind of sitting in the mid lane, casually sieging uh, up against a Ryze who can only really wave clear the Olaf who just stands there and takes damage from Jinx and Victor. And when those two are together, the Jinx and the Victor, you're, you're not really going to be able to uh, counteract any of that damage unless you're getting some kind of hard engage going. But it's not going to be looking easy and you take a look at the gold once again, it's very even as this Mountain Drake is about to spawn. And now is when Damwon Kia may consider taking some fights here. They don't want to give the Mountain Soul point over the side of Hamalite. Teleport available for both top lanes, but can't currently in Mega form. And without Mega, you don't really want to fight as Damwon Kia, but I don't think you want to give up this Drake either. Um, and Khan, just now out of Mega, has an empty bar, might be looking for the teleport in here. Um, because just trading a turret for Soul Point, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, he's going to teleport now. He is in Mininar farm, as you mentioned. And the Drake has already spawned. We'll see what they can do in terms of challenging here. It is going to be a straight up five on five. Take a look at the poke damage. Again, it's just pretty insane. Vista will be looking for the hard engage. He does get three of them. And there's the wild growth, but so much damage already is going back away from Domokia. Now Death is isolated on the top side. Going to take a bunch of damage, but now with Vista down, Toby tries to get in there and just gets destroyed by five members of Domokia. Nobody on the side of Hamwell Life supports him, and that's going to be the one fight and the Drake to the side of Domokia. And the cohesion just isn't there for Hanwha Life, because that's an attempt at a hero play by Chovy jumping in, blowing up Ghost. Sure, that can work, but they need to do it at the same time. We saw Jeff jump in on his own forced to flash away. We see Chovy going on his own. The rest of his team not on the same page. He dies. And Hanwha Life, without that flash engage from Rel, that fight is just 100% lost. Because as you all pointed out, they just get poked down. And there is nothing you can do about that. You need to hard engage. Now the flash is also gone on Rel. And yes, Rel's initiation with flash is absolutely bonkers. But without the flash, it loses a lot of its viability unless you can set up a hex flash play. And that means that any subsequent fight is a lot harder. You didn't get the sore point. And now for Hanwha Life, there is still a considerable window. But these are the first signs that we generally see when teams start losing against Damwon Kia. It doesn't happen all of a sudden. It's yeah. a thousand fi uh, tiny cuts. And these are the first start uh, cuts that are starting to come through here. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's very gradual, and it almost feels casual. <laughs> you know, we've seen this so many times. A massive engage, right? And you're thinking, wow, this is great for Hama Life, but it just wasn't enough. And again, the cohesion, right? Morgan has a full health bar, but is zoned away by that Chaos Storm. If Chovy goes in there with the rest of his team actually in tow, they blow up Ghost. There's a fat chance it still doesn't work out, but it looks better than this. They need to be on the same page to make these type of play work, because otherwise it just looks silly. You go in, Jinx doesn't die, she blows you up, you lose a reliable damage source. And as a whole, this is the problem that we were kind of fearing, that it would be Chovy just on himself. And it's not even that the rest of his team, I think, is playing bad. Vista's Rome has been good, that was a nice engage. Morgan and Johan have been completely fine. But that's not enough. They need to also actually play as a team, and that's a test that, um, thus far, they haven't really been able to pass. Yeah, and they haven't really been able to 
make their draft work either. They they weren't able to put on the pressure early on in this game, and and now we're just seeing a mid game where you're already losing fights to the raid's advantage, the poke advantage. You get hard engages, and you still get out damaged, and it's a bit of an issue. You know the the Lulu. It's an interesting addition to the comp. It offers a lot of utility, but not a whole lot of damage. So a lot of that will go onto the hands into the hands of Toby and Daft, but. They can't do it all alone. I am happy to see, though, that this Homeward Life, uh, even though it's not all synchronized yet, is playing proactive, is actually playing according to their plan. And that is something that we didn't see from Homeward Life in the Nongshim series, where they just looked completely lost, unsure as to how to play to their outs, what to really do, um, where to go for openings and where not. And also, just in terms of absolute laning presence, right, where they're able to don't fall behind. Oh, surely now, you know, you see the matchup starting to tilt in favor of Domonkia, specifically in the top side, but that's to be expected in this matchup. Uh, it's more about getting through that early game reliably. They were fine in that regard, and if they can keep leveling up throughout this series, I still see a chance for them to, at the very least, grab away a game or two. But in this game, we're still looking at the time. Yes, it is just a 2k goldie, but if you look at the way these two suit comps operate, it's, it's way more than that. It needs to yeah. be a misposition from Showmaker or Ghost. They have all summoners. They have a Tom Kench. And they have so much range on you, you know. It's either Vista gets you isolated away from Tom Kench, or we're going to see what we saw in the last team fight, which is, you know, a pretty much perfect engage. You can't really ask much more from him. No? You know, like, unless he's going to get all five, and then it's like, well, you know, who's who's actually carrying the team. It's inc incredibly impossible to do that, basically. Um, he got an awesome engage, and still, they did not win. As Look at this. Ken is just challenging Chovy. Chovy feeling the pressure from the rest of Dom 1. Showmaker was sprinting on over there, and so he will have to get out of dodge. And if Dom 1 Kia picks up more Mountain Drakes, uh, this game is just slipping out of your fingers as Hanwha Life, because... Uh, the damage of the Olaf is going to become less relevant as the game progresses, meaning you will have just Jovi and Deft. Deft, surely, he can auto from a distance, he's bought his Rapid Fire Cannon, and Tristana's passive will allow you to scale into more and more range. Um, but Jovi is always going to walk a tightrope of actually being in range of a couple of really scary carries of Domon Kia and doing damage, right? That's a tightrope yeah. that you always need to walk as Rise uh, that can make the champion feel broken or silly, depending on what the actual outcome of the play is. And if you're then playing against a Mountain Drake, that available space becomes even less. Yeah, and you can see that Dalmakia have already taken position here. The Udyr's going to sprint around, clear out all of the vision. Jovi's just trying to split push. I mean, this is something that the Rise can potentially do as he gets insanely scaled. But Khan is already trying to challenge him here with the Meganar coming on in. And this will deny Jovi entering the fight. You can see that he's already taken a bunch of damage, but there's not enough time for him to recall, teleport in, and for them to position for a fight. So this is just another Mountain Drake being given over to Damon Kia. And more so than any other team, Damon Kia feasts on inactivity um, from an opposing team or indecisiveness. Or in this scenario, just straight up Chovy, you don't win that 1v1. In an isolation, it's not a big problem. And in this case, it means you can't teleport, whereas Khan very much could, especially with Meganar being channeled. Uh, and then what? Then you can't contest the Drake. You can't get your soul point. And if this was a game where Humble Life was actually able to turn those early game plays into these two Drakes, was able to pick up a Mountain Soul, we would be talking about this game completely differently. But with this draft, I feel like that is very much what they needed to have gone for. And yeah. now it's still possible, right? If Showmaker and Ghost in this position, if Chovy finds backline access through a really nice engage from Vista, Deft can jump on top of someone. Like the blow up potential for Humble Life is there. But as all these Mountain Drakes start coming through, um, as Tom Kench still has his Exhaust, has his Devour, Ghost has his Summoners, Showmaker has Flash, all these things provide more and more hurdles for Hanwha Life to jump through. Yeah, it's really rough for them. You know, we, we sometimes talk about the onus of certain drafts and what they need to do. And this draft from Hanwha Life needed to get ahead early so that in the later stages of the game, you know, we have wild growth, whimsied Olaf running through your front line and not dying. But when you're behind and the enemy carries have so much gold and damage, the Olaf is going to run forward and he's going to run back.
back right away. I, I guarantee it. He's uh, not going to be able to do much. Oh, he just teleports back to base. Looking at the gray screen. Also an option, but not, yeah. not, one, not one you're really looking for, honestly. No, of course. And, uh, you know, that's... When we, when we look at this from Hamalai, sure, they can get away with some drafts like this against Nongshin, but you're playing against a whole other tier <laughs> of team now. Yep. Oh, barrel. So, good luck with that. As Death now is going to have to hop away, Ghost, you can see he has safety. The Tomkin six right next to him. And Hamalife don't have much in terms of ability to threaten this. And with every single Mountain Drake that gets taken, even Khan's split push gets stronger. <laughs> it's like more and more annoying for anyone to have to deal with him, as he's building tanky, of course. And even Chovy will have a rough time of killing him unless he's got, you know, 20, 30 seconds. Now on the flip side, if we flip this around, like how can Hanwha Life still find a way back into this game? Because the gold lead in of itself is not unsurmountable. It's more all the other factors that we talked about. I'm looking at more unlikely scenarios. A really nice uh, rift wall coming through here, right? From, uh, sorry, realm wall, better from Chovy. Yeah. Trying to teleport his team in a position or finding backline access together with Johan. Uh, and Vista, uh, maybe a Baron sneak. These are the type of plays that you're going to start looking towards. They have the same Baron damage, actually. Oh, yeah, no, it's... it's Rise or Stana alone. It's not okay. <laughs> and if Dom and Key ever get into a situation where Showmaker and Ghost actually are available for Chovy or Deft, and those two can just get a single rotation up in the for, uh, for Cho, as Chovy, right? If Deft can just get a single reset, and you augment that with a Lulu, then there's possibilities but if we know those things, Dom One Kia knows these things. And one of the reasons why we've been so impressed with this team, if you, you know, we're like, ah, I'm not going to watch Dom One Kia. They win everything. That's boring. I want to see the, the, the <laughs> underdog matches, right? That's, And it's kind of true. And it's because they always play to the outs. They recognize not only their own win conditions, but what are the win conditions of our opponents and how do we completely avoid and neglect those? On the gate, rather. I feel yes. like. Neglect will be kind of mean. <laughs> I think we can really do that. Okay, probably <laughs> smarter, yes. Um, you know, Damon Kia had the vision in this river for the majority of it. Hamalai for making a concerted effort to try to clear all of this out. Now three of them are standing on a ward. So they've kind of run out of scanners, out of control wards. They're threatening the Baron damage. As we mentioned, both these teams know the Baron damage from Hamalai is insane. Take a look at how fast this is going down with the two of them just shelling into this one, but already Johan getting pretty low. Some poke damage coming on out. Vista is looking for the flank, but take a look at the Olaf. He is just dead. He just gets sniped. See you later. And the Baron didn't even leash. So Damwon just skate on in, take away your jungler, snatch away the Baron like candy from a baby. And now they're corralling you up on the top side. The Flash comes in from Canyon. He's pretty tanky with his two Mountain Drakes, eh? And uh, now we're just trying to see the rest of Hama Life try to run away. And three of them will get away, but the Baron and two kills to Dom One it could just be lights out in this game. Thank you very much for the snack, Dom One, Kia says. And as Hama Life, you got to go for a desperate play. Uh, and it is truly desperate. We see that why is the moment that Hanwha Life actually decides, uh, or Dom One, Kia right, actually decides to respond to your play. You don't rush this down in time. Vista's going for a flank, uh, which in of itself will not be enough. Morgan not able to actually get Johan um, the help that he needs in this scenario. Then, yeah, that is just a beautiful start by Ghost. Because did need you can't go in, you can't contest Baron. Canyon had the presence of mind to recognize, well, we, we have control of the pit now. I'm going to keep this thing leashed. I'm not necessary whatsoever. And then the chase down comes through. And as on what life. Maybe if this does there early, you can get something going, but All right, well, it looks good. We had the Mountain Drake started up here by Hama Life. This might be the next step in terms of desperation, but that is a very nice engage. They're trying to get on top of Ghost, but he will live, and Vista will be the first one to go down. Khan is going to totally whip, but it does not matter, as everything on the side of Hanwa is just separated and torn. Deft is alone on the left side here. Thro a showmaker is going to throw him the thumbs up. Steph now is just sad. Might get soloed by Beryl. <laughs> Gets a lick real quick. And they even get the kill on the Morgan. That's going to be the ace. <laughs> Damonkia yeah, take another Drake. Kenyon has, to, has CS numbers to care about, okay? He's not he's not letting those <laughs> buffs live. And uh, Damonkia uh, responds so well. Hanwha Life. I was talking about crazy Realmore plays. 
realm warping your rel in the back of the enemy team. That's the kind of play you gotta look for. Unfortunately, Feral is just standing there right next to Ghost. Devours him, eats him up, keeps him safe in his belly. The fight is won, and Dom won Kia. As textbook as it gets, Feldas. Pretty much incredibly smart play. They knew what they had to do here. Pretty much zero mistakes. Ghost might die. No, he won't. Of course he won't. He's got Tom Kent's there. And even Vista's gonna go down. They're farming kills, and it's in the playoffs. They just don't care. Look at them. They're like, yeah, let's get into that fountain now. Maybe we can up our playoff KDA. We gotta look real cool after this one. That's another kill going to Ghost as he hits legendary eight and zero in the game. And that was not a close one, Chronicler. That was utter domination from Ham or from Domokia, rather, here in the first game. I'm happy to see that Hanwha Life is at least a bit more approximate to the form that we saw them in pre-playoffs. But the problem is that even pre-playoffs, that form was not good enough to beat Damwon Kia. And any concerns that Damwon Kia might have, you know, lost touch of the matter, might have just kind of gotten rusty in the time that they hadn't played, even though it was only like a week, right? We're, can't, we're kind of stretching here, but any of those concerns just... <laughs> any weakness. Yeah, any, we, find we any need weakness? to find something. No. Unfortunately, uh, there is nothing. There is the, the one play on both side, right? Ghost and the barrel overextend once. A kill happens. Two Drakes gets given up. Doesn't matter. This team is always in control. And it it's nice when you like you lay out a roadmap and it follows exactly that but as someone who really wants this to go to five games and wants to see Chovy yeah. grab some wins this is not a great start well i feel like also the rise wasn't the best start for him i don't know if he can actually solo carry in that game with that choice of champion um as you mentioned they needed to get a lot more done in the early game and then i think from ahead they do have Potential to run you down, potential to have Chovy just blow up your back line yeah. or split push without anybody able to deal with him. But because the early game was just so quiet and almost controlled by Damwon, we never really got to see any of the positive aspects of Hanwha Life's drafts. So that's, uh, that's what we ended up with, a very clean one-sided game. And I hope the rest of the games are not like that, but it would mean a very scary and intimidating Damwon Kia in the finals. But uh, We'll have to wait and see what happens after this one. Hamalife are going to have to go back to the drawing board and perhaps rethink their draft. Do you think they'll choose blue side for the next game? I hope so. I think blue side is a lot stronger at the moment. But we have seen opt into red side um, with some specific prepared counter strategies there. But it feels like if you see this first game, just pick blue side, draft scaling, and see if that gets you any further. Well, it works for Dom one. And uh, we do have the post game breakdown here ready to go. We're gonna take a look at some of the numbers. Yes. Yeah, that's kind of the. It's kind of what happened in this game. You, you didn't get ahead, and then the Jinx and Victor just had range and had scaling, and they just pummeled you to death. 30 minutes was all they needed. We didn't even need to see a, a supreme late game or anything like that. Canyon was kind of quiet. He didn't need to do a whole lot. Just kind of control the map, control vision, and the rest of the team can. Uh, take the win, essentially. It, it's really hard for me to designate like a specific best player in this series on, on Damon Kia as well, right? Because yes, Ghost was super big. I think that one particular snipe was a really nice play, but outside of that, it just felt like they were just kind of always together, and then the plays they made together work out every single time. Ghost yeah. like lost it, get excited, lost it, lost it. What do you do against this team? I don't know. I don't know if uh, anyone's really figured that out yet, even in 2021. But guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we do come back, we will have game number two.
공업 속 공업 속 너무 귀엽 빼면서 빼면서 끝났네? 뭐 끝난 거 같아 가면 되겠네 뭐야 최고 라이즈 라이즈 네, 라이즈 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 나 먹는 거 있어 먹는 거 있어 잡자잡자 힘이 힘이 여기까지 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 얘네까지 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 아 불만한데 아! 죽여줘 아, 뭐.
Hello and welcome back everybody to the LCK Analyst Desk for the second round of the LCK Spring Split Playoffs and today we'll be joined by Subinyun, Kuro and Gorilla. We are having a blast um, to start off the second round of the playoffs and Taman Kia selected to play up against HANA Life Esports for their first best of five in the Spring Split. This time around, Taman Kia blind picked NAR and HANA Life Esports took a counter pick into NAR top Lulu. So what's your take on that mid lane pick? I think I expected both Showmaker and Chovy to play um, Oriana-ish picks, you know, something that can, you know, help their teammates. But actually, Showmaker decided to play Victor and Hana Life Esports tried Rise together with Chovy in order to, you know, exert more dominance during the laning phase. Lulu is good up against Nar during the laning phase, but because Lulu goes for a very um, supportive Item choice actually Nars definitely definitely gets ahead of Lulu heading into the later games. Lulu can only be an enchanter moving on to the later stage. Well, actually, last time last time around when Lulu was played, it was actually together with a stronger jungle champion, so, for example, like Graves, a champion that can. Um, counter jungle Hecarim in a bit, but this time around it was Udyr versus Olaf, which means Lulu cannot really exert that much of a dominance in this time. And we were looking for that Lulu Tristana hyper carry synergy in the late game, but the game was completed quite early in this time around, so we were not able to see their full potential. Now let's take a look at this first highlight where Hollow Life Esports was able to gain their lane priority in many lanes. So Taman Kia also had the information that Olaf is pathing towards the bottom lane. This is a very basic kind of route, route that this jungler takes because Tamakia also had this information that Olaf started with that blue camp. So Jinx even places a ward in that brush, but still she was in a very dangerous position. She was slightly overstepping, so Olaf was able to pull off a very easy and successful gank and then Chovy was able to pop their Squire's Bloom and also place a ward near that Raptor camp and that was actually super significant for HANA Life Esports. Ryze had full vision on the right hand side of the map and then Udyr gets spotted by that ward. So Rel had all the information and also Tom Kent is spotted on that ward as well which means Vista found the perfect timing to gank mid lane. So together with Rise, Vista was able to get the flash out of Showmaker. Vista had this full information that Tom Kent is back on the lane, also Udyr is away from the mid lane, so it was a very easy and also very effective gank coming out from the support player. And with this play, Rise was able to enable his lane dominance up against Victor. However, let's take a look at the second highlight where Taman Kia was able to easily 
a win a team fight right clears that top lane wave and Nar was on the bottom lane and Lulu cannot now match the side lane priority coming up from Nar so which means Tumi has to deal with him however Hana like with sports decided to rotate it to that Baron try well Khan was turning back to a mini Nar, so I guess ha Hana Life Esports wanted to force a fight around that Baron. So v Vista looks for a flank angle to open a team fight. But this was not a good decision coming out from Vista because Olaf gets chunked down by that Baron. And Lulu didn't really hit that power spike to save all of her teammates so easily. Jinx was able to land their super rocket and then pick up a kill. We have to keep in mind that Hamon Kia was able to always outrange their opponents with their champion's ability, but it was really odd to see that Hana Life is Horse actually tried to commit that commit for that Baron fight because you know in a team fight situation it's always Hamon Kia that has the agency to take the fight and also it could have been a lot better for Hollow Life Esports if just Rice matched the upside lane together with Nar. Now let's take a look at the player of the game. It's going to be Ghost on Jinx. Even though he got ganked in the early game, he was still standing still on that bottom lane and together with Burl, he was always intact throughout the team fights. And after um, Tomkins was able to devour her and buy her a one tempo, she now re-engaged together with her teammates. A lot of people actually said that Thresh is the perfect partner for Jinx and other champions actually kind of is more risky. But this time around, Tomkins also proved that this is a perfect pick to save this kind of a hyper carry without any survivability. Even though there was no Lulu or any Enchanter around this Jinx pick, he was, she was able to still do a lot of work because she was able to build a rapid fire cannon and poke the opponents in the beginning of every team fight. Hamon Kia versus Hana Life Esports is a clash between the top three POG leaders in the um, regular split, so it's gonna be a banger and we had one game so far, and let's head over to game number two between Taman Kia and Hana Life Esports. Thank you so much, Jason, once again for the wonderful translation of the analyst desk. As we are going to head into game number two, a lot of the early game stuff very well covered, but Hama Life not able to get enough of a lead. Taman Kia just pristine in the way that they played that game number one. Ghost picks up the player of the game. Honestly, it was kind of a team effort, but he did hit Legendary and did some insane damage. Really great positioning. Johan is out. Arthur is in. I don't think Johan was really, you know, the one guy that messed everything up or anything like that. But Arthur certainly looked fantastic in the fifth game against Nongshim. So I'm excited to see him here. I don't think Johan was a problem, but Arthur might be the solution. Is what we yes. also saw in the series against Nongshim. Well, he's coming in fresh. Uh, then he was playing as Peanut, and Peanut, incredibly storied player, really strong, not quite Kenyon in his current form, um, yeah. and it's going to be uh, an uphill <laughs> battle. Meanwhile, uh, the, the polar bear himself, you know, he, he hibernates. Just, he hibernates until it's time to play. Game one was not entertaining enough for Kenyon, honestly. He's yeah, I mean, he played that with his eyes closed, right? Because like, I only open my eyes when when the when the actual fighting starts. <laughs> yeah. He was playing Hoodoo as well, so it's completely fine. And, yeah, player of the game there for Ghost. I actually love that we saw him on the Jinx, which in of itself is not necessarily something that you really think of when you think of Ghost as best champions. That'd be the Jin, uh, the Senna, right? These bit more utility-based carries, as opposed to the Jin, which is uh, Jinx, rather, which is just a good old-fashioned hyper carry. They're picking it away from Deft, making sure that you don't face that. Proved to be a very, very successful solution. And personally, I hope the Hummer Life say, guys, that first draft, early game, not it. You're gonna completely take a different angle, maybe go for some weird picks, maybe go for just a good old slow and scaling comp and see whether or not that gets us a little bit closer. Or they say, we just try it again, because this time we have Arthur. I'm not the biggest fan of that option, but this is something we've yeah. seen LCK teams do. So, um, we'll see. 
Well, they're gonna ban away the Gnar this time around. The Hecarim is still left up. Don't you dare ban Seraphine on blue side. I mean, they did it in what, five games against Nongshim? I know. So. I don't, I, I still don't like it. Oh. Okay. You see that tap on the back of Chovy right when that happens as well? I wonder. That's, that's Hecarim yet again. Here for uh, coming out, gonna be coming out presumably Unless here. Unless it gets banned and then they first pick Seraphine. No, you don't leave it. Oh my god, they do. <laughs> mm, you no, know, uh, that tap on the shoulder. I don't know. I I do think that Humble Life did not expect this. Oh no. no. Oh no, boy. No, no, no. <laughs> what is more broken, Valdas? Is it Death's Jinx or is it Seraphine that surely is gonna get picked up here? You know? There, there aren't a lot more things that are more OP than a 93% win rate, but I think it might be Seraphine in this case, <laughs> honestly. Um, now, did Delman Kia want to play it is the question. Uh, we, we haven't, well, we did see Showmaker play it a couple of times, so he could hop back onto it. But the first choice is going to be Ezreal and Graves for Canyon. Are we, uh, uh, are we, have we moved regions? Are we not raiding Seraphine anymore? Because this is a really yes. big, uh, <laughs> really big change for specifically the LCK, right? Because in the LEC, for example, the Seraphine, not nearly as important as here, but here we've seen a basically be a 100% pick ban up until this point, And both teams are kind of forgoing that, which is really interesting as presumably a Tom Kench pick here. I would personally like, um, I'm not, the biggest fan of the blind pick Silas here. Okay. But it is flexible. Uh, so I guess you can still get some flexibility there. And so is the Vodibet. Vodibet can be top or jungle, of course, and 11.6 a lot stronger. Do you feel like a Tom Kench ban is now in the works for Damwon Kia? And I still would really like a Seraphine pick up here. I, um, I, I would not mind that. I think the one argue you can make is that do you really want to go scaling against there it uh, is. that Jinx? Seraphine. There we go. Okay. And the Silas is kind of a pick that they wanted to get out before that. They're it's like, are you really going to pick Seraphine into Silas? I, and the answer is yes. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's just Encore. It's just the whole champion. Yes. Everything she does. So We're still figuring oh that out, Chronicler. <laughs> God. Okay. Apparently. Here at the LCK. Are we are we gonna see tank tops banned? Is that what's gonna happen? Are we gonna see the Alistair getting taken away here? Rel also made it through the draft up until this point. We don't know where the Seraphine is gonna go. LCK greatly prefers mid lane Seraphine over support, or um, in this case, obviously not awesome or, dude Seraphine. Um, yeah, um, thank you for that one. Took me a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Needed to, to think about that longer <laughs> than was probably justified. Yes. Aatrox ban here is. Interesting, because if Khan just wants to say, I'm gonna gonna pick up that sign here, which um, you're, uh, you're, you're making it really easy for him to okay, just so, blind sign. Okay, so listen, so it's so it's a bait, right? Like that. Th this is the this is the clearest bait I've ever seen, right? Like they've dug the trap, they've put in the meat, <laughs> and now it's just like DK. Dalma saw you... them do it. <laughs> yeah, they're like, okay, I see them placing a trap for me. Shall I walk directly into it? They got it right. You gotta, you gotta try and see what yes. happens. Sign Seraphine Valdez. That's as close as uh, to LCK as Exodia as it gets. A and Ghost Ezreal and Canyon's Graves. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but damage on follow the up. other end, Death Jinx and Jovi's Silence, which we have seen. Oh my um, God! This okay. Top player of the game the I'm, last series around. I'm way more excited about this game, okay? Because yeah, that first draft, <laughs> I saw the idea, but I was like, I don't know if that's actually gonna work out. But oh yeah, okay, okay. This is this is spicing up because these two teams can actually both fight in the late game, right? This is not a situation where you need to get stuff done early. With the vote about jungle, you definitely have the possibility. Graves' impact in the early game has been somewhat um, somewhat neutered. Of course, his late game is strong as always. Would love a Braum pick up here. That is really, really nice. So much utility, yep. uh, so much abilities that you can block on both love of it. these comps, Valdez. You know, we don't usually say we love the Braum, but in this case, it's great. You know, you have fantastic anti-engage and Ezreal Braum, that classic lane, it's coming back. Ezreal came back first, Braum is following it up. We see it here once again.
And now that the dust has settled, I personally, I'd say I'd favor Dumb One Kia's comp, because trying to play, again, a short-range comp with the exception of Deft, into Dumb One Kia's comp is not fun. There's a Cyan, and as real, you're never gonna get on top of, presumably. Uh, Barrel on Brom, which just tags everyone with an auto. If he goes Halo, Braid, uh, Halo Blades Brom, I'd be particularly happy, but I don't know if we're there yet in Korea. Um, and then you have Seraphine, which is self-explanatory. But, Hollow Life's comp, at the very least, they have the opportunity, right? There is plenty of playmaking, there's plenty of backline threat, and there is, and we keep going back to this because the stat is just too insane, Deft on Jinx. I can hear Atlas, like, yeah. yell <laughs> triumphantly somewhere. Yeah, uh, I'm sure that he will really enjoy the series <laughs> and this game, specifically the Jinx on Deft, the ultimate classic. It is brought back and you know, they're pulling out all the stops, trying to go up against Dalman Kia. They went for an early game comp, it didn't work. Now they're offering a bit more scaling, a bit more team fight opportunity, and they're bringing back Def's Jinx for this game. They gave a lot up to Dalman to make this happen. Not gonna beat around the bush on that one. You look at the side of Dalman, and that is the most comfortable composition I've seen for Dalman in a long time. And we'll see if it works out, as we are gonna hop onto the Rift here for game number two. I'm life this time on blue. So, of course, when you do lose, you get to choose your side. And Hama life choose the blue side. Yeah, Dumb One Kia got this on red side as well. Yes. Which doesn't, that, that's not really how it's supposed to work. Um, but we'll take it. As you mentioned, you know, the priority on Def's Jinx. It's, uh, Above all. Very obvious. And I'm a lifer aware of this as well. I, I love these change, like these uh, kind of adaptations that we see. And this is a very necessary adaptation because I said I, I would not have loved it if the Humble Life just ran it back with another early game comp. Recognizing that Domon Kia respect Death Jinx enough Many to preemptively that. pick it away for Ghost, whereas it obviously it performed really well, but it's not a champion that you'd necessarily expect Domon Kia to prioritize, right? To then first pick it. It is a gamble because you are now playing against what we perceive as one of the most broken combos here within the LCK, which is um, Seraphine Scion. And it's also Khan Scion, which is in a league of its own with the bans that came through. And then we go back to the question. We saw the bait come out, right? You, they baited Scion. They banned Cho'Gath and Aatrox, two of, yeah. two of the counters. Um, personally, bigger fan of the Cho'Gath, but both do work. Um, is there gonna be, is there gonna be payoff to that, that trap that they laid? Could you not just have banned Cyan? Yeah, I mean, it's like they saw them make the trap and then they're like, okay, we're gonna walk into it anyway. And then like a little, a little squirrel pops out. Uh, Gragas <laughs> is not very threatening, right? Um, now, it can go perfectly fine, evenly in the oh. lane. Yes, it is totally fine. It's but a great pick. You already saw the Seraphine. And everybody knows about the <laughs> the power of Scion Seraphine. Why don't you just take it away? That was the, uh, I think, the bigger priority that should have been shown in the draft. In conjunction to that, this is a pick that we've not seen Canyon on for a while. It was basically permaban throughout the early LCK split, but Graves, as a whole, not even within the top five of junglers at the moment, I'd say, if you look at prior around the world. Yeah. However, it's Canyon. And then the rules change a little bit. To go in. Okay, they're just trying to blow up the Seraphine here as fast as possible. And actually, Showmaker's going to do more damage to Toby than he took himself. And actually, he shells out a nice amount onto Arthur as well. But trying to put on pressure on the Showmaker, forcing his flash away is going to be nice and take away a lot of priority from the Seraphine. And this is a big advantage for Hanwha Live that we haven't really talked about is their setup, their 2v2s are insane. Arthur can go to every single lane. Khan is a little bit harder due to the fact that he's really tanky, but every lane has CC, has damage available, has setup, which makes it really easy for him to just run from lane to lane to lane, and as long as he doesn't fall too far behind Canyon in terms of farm, um, he will be able to reliably impact the map a lot more. And that is something that Damon Kia's comp does kind of lack. Once this comp actually starts grouping, they're insane, right? This is an insanely strong, devastatingly uh, powerful death ball, but it is a death ball. Uh, as long as they are individually spread around the map, doesn't have nearly the same level of threat that the 1v1s, 2v2s that Hanwha Life has available to them has. 
Absolutely. And you can see that Tovi has pulled the lane again into that very comfortable spot. The thing about this is that Showmaker teleporting in, there is a little bit of danger about, you know, a potential follow-up gank, but not going to actually come to fruition here. As Vista and Deft, once again, hiding on Bush. See if they can make something happen here on a Ghost. That's who they're looking for, but the immediate jump back is pretty easy in response from the Ezreal. And they, they knew that, right? So Ghost, he was like just walking in range and immediately walking backwards. Yeah, that's um, that's a 93% win rate yeah. over 43 games. He has lost three games all time. Steph's career is, is like eight years long, okay? <laughs> Imagine like, playing 43 games, losing three of them over an eight over, or so year span. Over in multiple regions yeah. as well, right? It's not like he just played in the LCK, he played in the LPL as well. In multiple scenarios? It's insane. You know, re regular season games, playoff games, big moments, regular moments. Canyon is going to be spotted here, but can the Gragas get away is the question. The smoke screen is going to come in. The body slam is not going to get him any range here as Morgan will flash away, but Canyon is a couple of autos away. There's going to be the flash on in, and Cobb does get the first blood, but the follow up kill will go the way of Arthur, and now Canyon's going for a run through the enemy jungle here, as at least Showmaker has some good prio. That's the only thing really saving Canyon for sure, although Arthur is also making his way down. We might just see him execute himself on the turret as that will be the play. we will be able to get away, but uh, teleport. Oh, the on in, and oh man, that's gonna be Toby picking up a huge kill on a Showmaker. Khan was teleporting in trying to save him, but that did not work this time around. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even- First time? I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think. Um, that that was, uh, we need to see the replay, but I think there was actually an attempt at a setup play from Damon Kia. I think they were trying to force something on Chovy. Oh my god. Well, uh, I was getting excited about this game, uh, and so far it's delivering. We've had action. It is. It we is. Have, we've had top lane plays, and this is uh, just a pretty clear setup uh, coming through. Morgan actually plays this really nicely. I feel like maybe if you flash away a little bit earlier there from um, the end of the line, you might be fine. Khan actually getting the kill there with his shield to make sure that the auto actually comes through. Otherwise, Graves obviously at the risk of his orders going into the turret. Um, but that does mean uh, that you're uh, in a bit of a pickle. As No, you're right. It is in fact Showmaker trying to get away. Then the teleport saving him and then Showmaker going like, um, actually, no. Yeah. And, uh, just insane. Doesn't even need Abscon and Abduct. Straight up kills him. And that is the punish for the flash that was forced earlier. So Arthur's early gank paying off right there for Chovy. Yeah. And uh, if there's one thing you want to do, it's to not underestimate Chovy and his ability to turn a 1v2 scenario into a straight up kill. He just makes him look silly that time around. You can't afford to have that happen if you're Dom and you don't want to get Chovy fed. In almost every game that Hamalife played up against Nongshim, Chovy was getting early kills, he was getting stacks on the Dark Steel, and he was oftentimes starting and just scaling out of control. So, Dalmon are going to have to try to put a cap on this, as we're going to see the red buff smited away here by Arthur, a really nicely timed steal. And this is the guy that watched the game, came on in as the relief jungler, and is doing very well so far. And this is good. Hanwha Live are pushing the advantages that the comp allows them to. But a crucial difference to last game is that even though the Damon Kia comp is insane, you can actually fight late game with this Hanwha Live comp. You do have a hyper carry in the form of Death. Chovy is finding openings and kills as a possible fight around Rift Herald here. Canyon is going to get jumped on and he gets a lot of healing, but that is just way too much out of Chovy and Arthur. I think Canyon not taking that as seriously as he should have, and he gets punished here on the Rift Heralds. That's uh, a success. And it's success. not over oh, yet. God. Chovy is still putting on the pressure on the Showmaker, trying desperately to drag his team over the line. Well, I'm um, 
I'm get, starting to get excited about this. After game number one, this was looking like a quick 3-0, and uh, we need to be careful not to get overexcited just because of, as we said, this is a death ball come from Dom Kia. They're not supposed to excel here. But what we are seeing from them is that they're playing disrespectful, right? Kenyon is just starting up the Rift Herald there without the rest of his team. And then that's one thing, but instead of just quick throwing over the wall, he also goes and looks for a play on his opponent. It backfires tremendously. And if you get into a position where the Dom Kia comp is actually at a sizable deficit going into the mid game, your team fights become a whole lot harder and um, that's not where you want to be because you have reliable front line, right? You have plenty of opportunities here to get stuff done. Canyon, yeah, he opts into this. He dashed over the wall, so he didn't really have an easy escape. And then it's um, a nice attempt as Canyon gets the threat smite there. So I guess that, that is something that you get out of that situation. Um, not really what you're looking for. You give over a kill to the Voli Bear. It's going to be very happy with that. Who? I haven't really talked about this yet, but it's also not done for press the attack, which in terms of immediate dueling and uh, damage amplification is really good. But gone for the Predator, which just allows you to always get on top of your target, which against an Asriel um, and against a Grave that's going to be trying to kite away from you are quite like. Now, what does this actually mean, these leads that we're starting to see crop up? I think the Volibear leads uh, is good, but it's mainly about how fed can Chovy get, right? Because this Silas is a pick where if you get too far ahead it is a champion where if you can stretch the mechanical limits of what he can do combined with honestly how many ultimates are strong i'd say three four out of five uh, on the side of Domon kia i yeah. think the ezreal one isn't great but encore self-explanatory cons can have a lot of value barrels is insane um you can do so much things that other champions just can't and this is the player that is supposed to be the hard carry for Hanwha Life. And we've seen him do it again and again and again. Need we remind you of the Yone games? I don't think we do because I think, <laughs> I think still everybody have those. remembers those. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll still have those um, burned into our eyes. And uh, so will the opponents of Hanwha Life, if they're not careful here. The pace now slowing down a little bit, and I think that's good for that one, Kia. Yeah, they don't really want to be taking early skirmishes and getting behind, of course. Uh, just trying to scale as much as possible with the team fighting death ball comp, as you mentioned. Still going up against the Jinx, and now Beryl is caught. Magnet Storm is going to get down as he tries to ult to survive, and you know what? He actually will. That's a lot of damage now coming out from Canyon, but again, Chovy is there. At least Canyon is going to be able to flash away from that one, but Chovy just seems to be everywhere. Dom one cannot avoid him. Beautiful play that from Hanwha Life. The setup is really good. Cancel comes Ooh. through there. And they just need to clear the wave. Those plates are fine. Uh, you will be able to trade up a couple of plates in the mid lane. So it's going to be two for two. Not the worst of scenarios. As long as you don't die here, you need to be respectful. Uh, that smoke screen from Kane having a big impact. Chovy! Here he is again. And he is going to land it. Once again, lots of damage on a Showmaker. But you can see Charmed under turret. Chovy will not be able to continue on that attack. There is a beat drop available there. You are dead. Uh, that is a. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we like to see you solo carry Chovy. We'd rather not see you teleport in and then get uh, solo killed, but um, <laughs> presumably if Shomek has more mana, Chovy doesn't go in there, right? Knowing uh, the limits very well, and it's necessary as well because this comp from Hanwha Life, with the exception of Dev2 in the late game, can just by staying alive kind of have impact and win fights by himself just by autoing, autoing, autoing as much as he can, maybe getting decided. Chovy is very much going to be in the thick of things. Silas is a very binary champion, and once you get fed, it looks amazing. Kingslayer provides so much value, um, but it's also easy to get over enthusiastic. This ghost uh, gets away from the turret here. Arthur is flashing in. The exhaust is going to be used, but there is seemingly no escape, and even Ghost is going to try to flash away, gets punished. After that, and Arthur is just making plays. This guy is three and zero. Yeah, the Volibear pick coming in huge, and Arthur, this man is uh, maybe the hottest sub we've seen so far, comes in and has thus far smashed it every single time. Domon Kia tried to trade on the top side of the map, but it's a kill going over. Ghost uses his flash as well as the W from Arthur picks him up. That's first turbot going to the one person you're not allowed to get fed this game, which is Deftus. I guess Chovy's also in the game. There's not just one person you don't want to get fed, True. let's be honest. But Deftus Jinx getting fed is also real bad. And Hanwha Life, more so than I expected after the first game, are using the skirmishing 
and the pressure that their composition have to really punish Damon Kia for what is, while a strong draft once you get to the team fight stage, is a greedy draft. And Damon Kia, they're not playing respectfully. They're not. I mean, the barrel is just coming on in here trying to protect the control ward when they do not have Pryo for mid lane, and Arthur is here. That and... smoke screen from Canyon Eye. Otherwise, I think that would have been even worse. As here. Oh. Not flashing this as Ghost, I think, is fine. Um, uh, never mind, he can't even, because he gets hit by the stun from a track repel into the knockoff. Really well played from Vista there. Who also had a great game one. I might remind you on the rail, looks really good. Yes, the engages didn't work out, but the engages that happened were really good. <laughs> and Damwon Kia. 2k go behind at this point in time is not something we're used to seeing from them. But I'm also not getting ahead of We need No one needs to get ahead of themselves because this is still Dumb One Kia and we have seen them at deficits before and still clutch it out. And if there's something that this comp can do, it's that. Yeah, especially in 5v5 team fights. I, I think as long as they stop getting isolated, and uh, that's not easy either because Jovi has been very active around the map, has as has been Arthur. I think the two of them have been kind of the, the duo that's carrying right now and making so many of the plays that have gained this early lead for Hamalife. And if they just keep that up... Thanks, you, Jonas. It's going to be nice. I agree. I, I just wanted... That was really important. Yes. A, a sign. You, you know. got to kill um, Scuttle crap. You can't get the Scuttles, man. Otherwise, the enemy jungler gets them. That's not allowed. Scion turns out he's very good at taking the scuttle crab. This is one Q. <laughs> it's half the health gone. <laughs> yeah. And now we're just kind of posturing here in the mid lane. The second Rift Herald available. Chovy going to steal that Braum ultimate. And Dalmon are, are actually considering fighting this one. As, okay, everything is going to miss Barrel at least. So Everfrost now down for about five seconds. <laughs> the cooldown pretty insane. Especially on 11-6. And here comes the teleport for the engage. It's good from Vista. Barrel in the front line trying to keep everybody alive. But Canyon now going to be isolated. But they can't kill him. They cannot kill Canyon. And Trovi is not doing enough damage. Khan is tanking everything from this Silas at this point in time. That's going to be two kills going the way of Dom1. And that's why you say you never count this team out. Because going into this, I'm like, wh why are they trying to contest? They don't need to. It's just a second Rift Herald. The plates are gone. You don't really care about this. But Don Juan Kia sends an opportunity. This extended fight, though. Ooh, Trophy's thinking about it. But again, Khan is just so tanky that you got to be careful. This is still 3v5, 3v4, I suppose, before Canyon gets here. They're going to get the kill onto the Scion. And it actually does end up working out, I suppose, here for Humble Life. Is Chovy even going to get his revenge on the zombie? And in the end, that's still a favorable trade for Dom Kia. Although, all oh, Hanwha Life taking risks here. Yeah, they're trying to extend their tempo advantage here. The Everfrost not going to get anything done. Nobody blows any summoners or anything like that. So, Dom Kia totally fine. What a beautiful game number two, those for Valdez. The gold lead for Hanwha Life is now basically gone. It's still 3 400 gold, but it used to be way more, and it boils down to disengage. When disengage happens, I don't think they know that Khan is teleporting. He wasn't in vision, so all of a sudden they're fighting from a deficit. The depth is not actually able to do meaningful damage within this fight because Hanwha Life um, was engaging through that choke point, and if death tries to walk through there with the death were already formed by Dom Kia, you run the risk of getting encored and then you just die, so he needs to play yeah. respectful. And then, yeah, this extended fight, Khan gets hit by, I think, walks into Chompers here? Yeah, walks into Chompers, um, so he didn't even need to die there. <laughs> and then it would have been completely fine. He's so big, he can't see underneath himself, so he didn't see the small <laughs> Chompers there. Scion's like about 20 times the size of the Chompers. Can't really blame him. You got a lot of teleport wards here, and one will be utilized as Vista is looking for the knockup, will be flashed. The Encore gets Ghost here, and he will be immediately blown up as now they're trying to get on top of Barrel. It will not be able to, but that is a nice pick here right before the Dragon does spawn. And normally as Hanwha Life, it's like, is it worth it forced this much just for a kill? But the Drake is up and getting a second Drake here. Um, Hopefully, it will be a Mountain Soul again. Otherwise, as Hanwha Live, you're going to feel a little bit less happy about this play. Yeah. Uh, regardless, though, getting yourself up to two Drakes, picking up a Drake that's always useful in the form of the Ocean Drake. 
is um, it's looking promising, and it will be a cloud sword. Oh. I knew it was too good to be true. Yeah, I, I feel like you know it, it's kind of just basic thing. We have to get one cloud soul per series. It's like we're sponsored by Cloud Soul or something. So <laughs> thank, by cloud soul. thank you, Cloud Soul, for your contribution. Very sarcastic on that one. Um, yeah, the Mountain Drake, the Mountain Soul would have made it really interesting, you know, because of, you know, Scion Seraphine obviously utilizes it in its insane fashion, but also Hamalife can, so they would be fighting over those fiercely. But instead, the Cloud Soul will be interesting to see how much pressure we see on those Drakes. And we see that Hanwha Life's uh, team can get very much still win, and there's basically two ways. There it. Oh, there we go. That's the utility <laughs> of that Cyan Ultimate. You know, Shoemaker doesn't know. Showmaker, yeah. And here we go. The cask does come in, and Chovy is already up here on the top side. Everfrost is going to get the slow, and see you later. Chovy is here again, and now he is four and zero in this game. He's kind of running away with it once again on the Silas. Coming into today, a question was, can Chovy solo carry games against Don Monkia? I think the answer is still no, but if you give Chovy a couple of teammates, then it becomes a completely <laughs> different situation, right? And you got to give credit to the rest of Hanwha Life as well. Arthur's impact on the map has been impeccable. It's Morgan that actually sets up that play there by sneaking into vision and making sure that Chovy can pick up the kill, right? And now with all these augmentations, we see a 1,500 gold lead available here. The Ghost uh, Ezreal really far behind as well. And there is still this death ball, and we saw in that earlier team fight. I am never going to count out Dom and Kia until this game is actually won, because their team fighting is absurdly good. But this is a hard while life that I'm really happy to see. I was afraid after that first game that this was going to be, you know, the, the classic LCK run it back with like yeah. a slightly different angle, but basically the same draft, and then lose that as well, and then maybe in game three try something. It's Khan. Finds a flank here. Flank would be pretty interesting. They're gonna find Vista, but that's not exactly the guy you were looking for. There's a lot of damage though on a Toby in the front line, but here comes Arthur trying to create some space. Toby is gonna get dived on by Canyon, but he's got another stopwatch, and there's the Encore, and the blow up from the Graves takes down that Silas and takes away the shutdown. As Dalmon Kia do it again, they find an opportunity, and now they have their eyes set on the Baron. And uh, I haven't, the words haven't left my mouth of Dom and Kia find an out of nothing team fight to all of a sudden get complete control of the Baron pit. Arthur isn't there. They can't actually contest this. No, I mean, they can't do anything. Deft is just attacking the mid lane turret. That's all he can do. I mean, and Baron will go the way of Dom one, at least to get the turret, I suppose. The one angle is if Deft has ultimate and you go for it and the uncapped Jinx finds the steal somehow, but now they're oh, going in here. This is, uh, it's not what you're looking for. It almost looks like they're trying to bait, almost trying to give them the benefit of the doubt here <laughs> because both Toby and Arthur are very far behind. But I suppose with the teleport potential, they were thinking about it. You got the Raptor though. Uh, you got the, the big chicken. That's that's something. As <laughs> Got him. He was ready. Thanks, Jonas Strong. <laughs> I'm glad we get those little moments, you know? We need to take a breather from all the action that's happening in this game. And it is an action-packed game. And here in um, how many AD carries? I, I personally dubbed this the rumor zone. Like, how many AD carries have we seen getting flanked here from a bot side play? This time it's Chovy and Daft. And yes, the stalling is there for a little bit with Kanye, uh, with Canyon and Khan being such a threatening force. There's nothing we can do. Beautifully timed Ankur as well there from Showmaker. There's no way that Chovy ever gets out. And... It's really that easy. One play, and Dom and Kia are back in the driver's seat. Now they have Baron available. Sure, Chovy can push on his own, but I can assure you that Dom and Kia will push a lot faster. Next, Dragon can go the way of them, and normally I'm not the biggest fan of cooldown reduction, but look at what Dom and Kia has in terms of ultimates. I'm like, well, actually. Let's take a look at this, because we have a bout of bajillion teleport wards here. Yeah. Um, we, we've got a control ward even by the Baron, or by the Dragon. And you can see that Toby's just waiting in the base, thinking about how he's going to take this teleport and is going to be in the lane. Dom unable to back off on this one. So they do spot him, so the teleport not going to be too efficient. He does get in the play at least. And now they have first track on the mid lane actually, so they're going to look for a push. 
As Damakia seems like they don't want to allow them to do this. Khan, here he comes, going to be able to zone them away with just the one ultimate ability. As Hummelife, at least they're buying a lot of time here against the Baron of Damakia. Still thinking about an engage. We have Barrel's ultimate stolen now by Toby. Khan still frontlining. He puts himself in between the Seraphine and the Ezreal. That's all he's got to do. And here we see the problem of trying to kind of poke and outrage your way slowly into Seraphine comps. Doesn't work because she will sustain you up with Moon uh, with Moonstaff. And Whoa. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I just saw the death of the Cloud Drake flash before my eyes. If Kenyon doesn't dodge that, if he gets hit by that, that's that's it. Oh. Right, like that. That's that's Drake on 100 percent. Death. Mmm. Close. But again, it is just the Cloud Drake. And this is more about this huge Baron push that we have coming in here. Hamalai thinking about engaging. And in fact, because of the threat of Tovi and his flank from the top side, they are going to respect it with the Baron running out. Damwon will look to get it back in and buy some more items. Because while Damwon's incredibly strong death ball comp is now decisively online as we have seen, right? Canyon playing his graves like he always has. Even though his early game was a little bit rough, his pressure is insane. Uh, Ghost has hit his two item spike, will be presumably building towards a Cyrilda's Grudge, which is going to help him out a lot. Um, Showmaker online. There is still the risk of backline dive. There is still the risk of Chovy coming in, finding any of the big ultimates and blowing up. And that's why Domlin Kiev needs to play this as respectful as humanly possible. And that's why we see them every time that they're moving up and they see Humble Life move even a little bit forward, they back off. It's very true. Just ultimate respect being shown by the side of DK. Does, of course, give a lot of time for Def to farm up, get three items. He's getting close, as we can see. And we'll see if, you know, eventually in these late game team fights, if he's gonna have enough damage to chew through Seraphine Scion to potentially pick off some of the squishier carries on the side of Dalmon Kia. It's not going to be easy. You're going to have to try to warp some team fights into your advantage, you know, get some more Silas flanks and stuff like that. Otherwise, still favoring Domlin's comp in that sense. I think it's stronger in terms of uh, outright front to back. And that is why, as we pointed out, Hanwha Life will always be looking for those flanks, right? And it's also why I really like the fact that Domon Kia went for a flank, because you'd expect the sign to just charge down the mid lane, but instead he was looking for a side angle. And that's something that's what my friend is showing me. Here we go again. And of course, we're looking for the encore here. Toby able to steal that one this time around, but again, Domon Kia will not get taken off guard. They will not be caught off guard. And no one will get flanked. No one will be killed. The side push for Khan felt annoying at first, but now it's actually becoming a bit threatening. They will have to respond to that by sending at least Morgan down. One upside that you have here as Hanwha Life is that later in the game, Adamon Kia's damage profile gets a little bit more one-sided. Uh, as the Seraphine, of course, it will st still deal some damage, but uh, with the build, uh, it's much more about the utility that it provides. Unfortunately for them, um, Cerrado's Grudge will come through. Canyon already has his Lord Dominix finished. Mm -hmm. These two AD carries are still going to chew for everyone on the side of Hanwha Life, as um, neither uh, Morgan in of itself didn't get fed to the point where we see that Gragas kind of become a raid boss. Khan is just getting free health as the game progresses. And then we have Arthur, who, while having a really good early game, has kind of run into the issue that Voliba has, which is later in the game, you go in, and either the play works out or it doesn't, right? And that's basically all you can really do as Chovy keeps looking for these angles, but needs to really be respectful. Yeah, um, oh man, he is so far up. This is a big problem. Here comes Canyon and Khan trying to get on top of this level 16 Silas. The flash comes out, but the damage is so huge from Canyon. Was it enough though? The Kingslayer, a lot of damage actually coming out now, but it's four on one. This barrel comes up and he is not able to trade back even a kill. Ghost feels like <laughs> unintentionally hits, gets hit in the face with a rocket, but now that Toby is gone yet again, Damwon will look to make a play onto this Baron. Take a look at Depth. He's trying desperately to do some damage 
onto the Scion, and Khan is just laughing at him. Just way too tanky at this point in time. Has no rocket available this time either, and Beryl is just zoning everybody away. That's going to be the Baron now in the hands of Dalmon for the second time this game. And the need to carry becomes too heavy to bear for Trovi as he gets picked off in the side lane. Way too far forward. Okay, All alive. Trying to get on top of Beryl. But again, Trovi's not here. He has teleport in five seconds. But again, just trying to zone them away. Avoid some backs so maybe they can get the dragon. I think you can get Sword Point here. I don't know. As Dumb on Kia, if you really want to try and go for this, there is no oh. vision whatsoever. They will look towards the They Trump are, teleporting though. In. There's no vision here. Khan is looking to engage by himself, and he is tanky enough to actually just walk at the enemy team and zone them all away. Vista has a really nice angle on the top side, but Barrel and Khan in the front. The damage, though, not enough. That's going to be the spike going in, but now Damankia looking for the fight. Nice knockup from Chovy, but the damage is pretty huge. Vista trying to get the engage on the Showmaker, but he's incredibly safe, and so is Ghost. As Chovy now trying to go 1v4 here, but he is going to be taken out as well. And Khan is still alive after tanking three people's worth of damage and death damage for the entire fight. That is going to be a huge win in the team fight for Tom One. Might even be the ace as they are trying to take down Morgan here and they should be able to, but they will be looking for the push as well to at least take an inhibitor. There's no team that team fights as well as Dumb Kia within the LCK. You cannot give them this comp anymore. I thought that Jinx would be enough. It's not. You see the amount of limit testing, how clean they play these fights. They lost no one. No one. Zero. It's a 30-minute fight against the Jinx with three items. How do you get away with that? All right, let's see this, though. Arthur takes in a huge amount of damage. They're just desperately trying to end it. Someone could attack the Nexus, but they want the kills instead. Did they wait too long is the question. Toby's up here. That's a really big encore as well, as now they're just going to hit the Nexus, and Dalman will take the game. Just playing with their food. This is a round two playoff match. They've done this twice in a row. Dom one crush them in the later game team fights and make it look incredibly one-sided yet again. Oh, the hope in the hearts of the Hanwha Live fans after that initial setup in this game, after seeing Trovi getting fed, after seeing Arthur do so incredibly well in terms of his overall map presence. Death looks a lot better. He's one of his most comfortable picks, which means he has his First, a fourth loss rather, fourth loss yeah. ever competitively on Jinx. And all it took was uh, Dumb One Kia, <laughs> as it turns well. out. <laughs> really, really good at League of Legends. It's, yeah. it's insane. Yeah, it really is. Um, I want to take a look at that last team fight. And that, wow, okay, it's like I summoned it. <laughs> um, I just want to watch Deft and see, you know, what is the efficient damage, the effective damage that this Jinx is actually getting done with three and a half items here? Look at Canyon's damage as well. Yeah. Uh, that's, um, that's not okay. And then it's Khan. Khan single-handedly zones yeah. Deft away out of this Deft. fight. He's trying to do damage. He he switches to Canyon. Stopwatch. Oh, now he's like, okay, now I have to hit Scion again. Watch Barrel here. Look what he does. He sees, oh no, Khan going low. Not on my watch. First gets the auto of the Winter's Bite off to make sure that he dies. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. Keeps his teammate alive, making sure that nothing happens in that fight whatsoever. And, and, and this is why Dalman Kia win. Because <laughs> five players are on another level. All five. This cohesiveness okay? as It's well. not one, it's not three, or four, it's five. And Barrel, I think, deserves the pog in that game. Not even for just that fight, but also the catch on a Chovy in the mid lane and all the crazy things he did on that Braum, which we were highlighting was a great pick, really fit into this comp that just felt perfect and gifted to Dom1 in game number two. Do they have an answer for game three? Because um, they took two different angles here against Dom1, and Dom1 just laughed at them both I, times. I don't know what you do. That's the problem. I, I thought this was the angle. Fun with life. It looked like yeah. the angle initially, but then the problem is, and um, I said this in game number one, I'm going to keep coming back to this. If there is an opening that you leave, Dumb One Kia will 100% find. In this case, I think the where the, the swap happened, where we saw Hanwha Life lose their groove, and uh, we saw all of a sudden like more forcing. We saw Chovy getting greedy or uh, too over aggressive pushing out the wave. Was that catch on Chovy and Deft in the mid lane? 
right? They were standing around yeah. the broken down tier one turret, the flank came through, they went down, and from that point on, Dom and Kia just never gave it control. Yeah, we have the post game breakdown ready. We're gonna take a look at this, and it will tell a little bit more of the story. Yes, the Jinx did a lot of damage, but I feel like most, it was probably like 6K into Scion's whole health bar in that last fight, and then it just didn't end up mattering at all. Nobody died in the last team fight for Dom1, and it's another about 30, 31 minute game. That's all they need. They just and, win at this time. And that's the mind blowing thing is that this game in terms of game time and in terms of overall like flow of the gold graph, yeah. literally 100% the same as game number one where Han were were playing an early game team composition. They didn't win the early game and then Dom1 Kia um, kind of afterwards as expected slapped them around with their range advantage, but that was not the case here. Right, how our lives come? Yes, I don't think in a straight up 5v5 it was as good. And you could sense that they were also looking for these plays. They were looking for these flanks. They were trying to have anything that wasn't a straight up 5v5. Um, and please, can we stop giving over Seraphine? Because it makes yeah. me so sad every. Because I keep, I keep getting my hopes built up that maybe we find the answer this time, and then it just this happens. The teams have not learned just yet. Sion Seraphine got through to a red side team in a draft. So we'll see if that changes, guys. We're going to have to take a break before we do get into game number three. It might be the last one of the night, so we're going to have to wait and see, guys. We'll join you after a quick commercial break. ちゃんぽんはちゃんぽんはいくよおれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれれ
활동적이고 맵을 지배하고 있죠. 예. 그렇죠. 아, We're back after Taman Kia taking down Hana Life Esports once again. A pure dominance coming out from Taman Kia after falling behind in the early game. Taman Kia had a very high uh, longevity perk coming out from Taman Kia. Even though Seraphine was open, Hana Life Esports higher, highly prioritized that Jinx perk for depth. Uh, we, we do understand that um, decision because not only because of theft, but also Ghost showed a high priority on the pick as well in game number one. So Hana Life Esports wanted to take that away from Ghost as well. 
And looking at the uh, picks coming out from Talmon Kia, Seraphin and Ezreal together with Brom, they are not that strong in lane, but still, they have two AD carries together with Marksman and Cyan Brown front lane, which means they are so stable heading into the later stage. A very much of a flawless comp for team fight. And we saw the point where Hana Life Esports was actually letting Khan to take away that Cyan and Morgan had some decent game up against Cyan on that Gregor's pick, but this time around he was facing up against Khan's Cyan, Tamman Kia's Cyan, which is a little bit different than other Cyans. And Ram was also uh, doing a fantastic work in this comp. Hana Life Esports had Jinx to poke the damage, but Ram was there to block all the damage, and the rest of the players on the side of Hana Life Esports had to dive onto the opponents, but there were two beefy frontline on the side of Tamman Kia. Hana Life Esports was able to have the lane priority based on their champion matchup, but this team fight turned the game around. Rel was in a bit of a rush, but she, Vista was able to find a fantastic ultimate angle, but the Braum ultimate connects to the three enemies, including both of the carries on the side of Hana Life Esports, and Scion gets blocked by Seraphim's EN. Encore, so Chovy was not having the best time to take this fight. Well, Jinx was not able to do any damage because there were so many dangerous and risky abilities for her to dodge, which means she could not participate in that fight at all. Tom and Kia cleaned up that kills and picked up the Herald as well. Now let's take a look at the second highlight where Tom and Kia started to take the um, gold lead in this game. Cyan was able to shove in the wave up against Graves, um, Gregas instead on the bottom lane, and he grouped up and rotated up to the mid lane end. Hana Life Esports had the information looking at the pings going down, and Graves also got spotted by Hana Life Esports, and Chovy goes in very aggressively in order to steal away that Ezreal ultimate, but there was a minion wave. Oh, from the red side, which means Burl can find an opening to land his abilities onto Showmaker, and Volibear comes in to save Chovy, which means he's also getting caught out. And two of the um, fed players on the side of Hana Life Esports got caught out, which means it's a free Baron for Hamon Kia. I do understand that action from Silas because he was super fed, he also had Zonia's you know, stopwatch, so a fed Silas doesn't really die that easily, but Palma and Kia, especially Burl, was right there in order to immediately punish the um, overstepping coming up from Chovy. Let's check out the player on the, of the game on the side of Tom and Kia, and it's going to be Burl on Braum. A fantastic performance and flawless mechanics coming out from these players in both game one and two. He's doing a fantastic work saving his teammates, but at the same time, he always zones out the enemy's carries. In this one team fight, he was single handedly zoning away Jinx and also Silas. And Brom actually had a confidence that Rel is gonna, gonna, going to come in. So Brom, actually, if we take a closer look, he ulted faster than Rel. And right here, Burl punishing a slight mistake coming out from Chovy, who was also coming in clutch. And that was actually transpired into a very easy Baron for Taman Kia as well. Taman Kia took a very hard comp to pull off in the early game. They had losing matchup, they had the weak side in lane, but they managed to find a breakthrough throughout team fights, and they were able to convert that into a huge lead. Pearl picked up 8 votes out of 9 for this POG, and Taman Kia is having a very landslide victories up against Hana Life Whisports all throughout the series, but still Hana Life Whisports are staying strong in the early game, especially during the laning phase, so let's take a look at game number 3 between Hana Life and Hama Kia. Thank you once again, g Sun, for the awesome translation of the analyst desk, and let me just say, it is incredibly hard to earn POG on Braum. But oh, Barrel, yeah. Barrel pulled it off. Every single team fight was actually, it was like he was the composer of the orchestra chronicler. We have a phrase uh, back in the band, like, I don't know if it originates there, but it's the worse the player, the better the Braum. 
And I, I, I'd like to think uh, that Barrel, uh, you know, to me, just showed how insane that champion can be with the amount of uh, teamfight awareness that he has. Because Rome's passive, if you're able to consistently spread it by just getting an auto in there, win yeah. the fight there, auto in there, and then the way he weaved in and out of fights, uses Unbreakable to that extent, it's just, it's insane. And this is why Dumb One Kia um, are 2 0 up, is because every single player on the team is insane. Surely, I think fair, uh, fair criticism was levied towards Ghost and Barrel, specifically Ghost throughout this split, right? Like they were getting a little bit more inconsistent. Showmaker mm -hmm. was not hitting the highs that he used to. But when they turn it on, they are just too insane. And I I don't want to see Seraphine ever being given to this team anymore. Ironically enough, though, I wonder if Dumb One Key are ever just going to let the Seraphine go through because we've seen Showmaker Zillion. And, you know, yeah. I, I wouldn't mind seeing that again. That was fun. Uh, but the real problem is, what angle do you have left now as Humble Life? It's rough. I mean, we thought they had an angle in game two, but... Uh, as we saw, the team fighting there from the best team fighting team in the world was just a little bit too strong. So where do you go from here? Um, well, we're going to go ahead and ban away the NAR. By the way, just uh, a point. Hamalife did choose red because they are the losing team they get to choose again. So they say, okay, blue didn't work out. Let's try red. At hey. least they're going to ban the Seraphine. Nice. That's which... an Udaya first pick if I've ever seen one. And... As a whole, I, I gotta say, I don't know what you do here as Humble Life. You went for an aggressive early game angle, didn't work out. You went for more of a team fight angle, and yes, you can criticize the drafting that they went for due to giving over Seraphine and Sign on red side to Dom Dom One Kia, which is not something that should ever happen. Um, but still, that was a composition that, outside of some disjointed moments between what Jinx, you know, wanted to do, which was have some peel, have some uh, some good uh, um, good protection in the rest of the comp that really wanted to dive in deep, um, they could fight, and we saw them fight very successfully. The skirmishing was insane. The vote about early on worked out great. Off, I think, coming in to a series, mid-series like this, then getting your Vody Bear and playing like that is really impressive. And it's something that I yeah. think he deserves a lot of praise for, even though afterwards it didn't really work out. And I had not commented on this, and I should have, because Senna went through the draft. And this is the problem with Dumb Monkey. There's too many things. Because now I'm like, well, how do you win this game? Ghost has Senna. But then... Oh, no. There's, there's so much of that <laughs> with this team, Velvas. That's the problem. There's too many things. Yeah. Um, you see Khan burst into laughter when Showmaker hovers the Aatrox. I, I, okay. He's going to go for the Cho'Goth, actually. Um, you know, almost definitely playing against the Gragas up in the top side. Pretty interesting. Decides not to go for the Scion this time around. What I really like about that is that if you go for the Scion there, then Hunter Life can pick the Cho'Gath. But by picking away the Cho'Gath, you basically force Morgan to play on the Gragas top because normally what you could do is... Um, you could still flex it, right? You could put Vista on that uh, Gragas. That's not going to be the case now. And considering last game, I'm pretty sure that Morgan is going to play it again. Uh, what we see here thus far from Hanwha Life is, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it's it's not bad, but it doesn't get me excited either, right? It's 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 decent. Uh, you'll have the Olaf is, uh, yeah, it's, it's like a thorn in my eye right now. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, you can make the argument for Olaf kind of getting you through the early game, and then you have this really nice composition uh, where Victor can do a lot of damage, Gragas can frontline, but you don't have any augmentation for your Olaf. Olaf Victor is not something I get particularly excited about. You're playing against uh, Canyon's Udir that we saw had a really big impact. Really like the Tom Kench band, but yeah. this can still be Cho'Gath and Senna bot lane. This can still be a Cyan bot lane. They can pick Maokai for all I care. There's so many options still available due to the fact that you can just pick anything to go with the Senna. So Domo Kia don't actually give anything away. Or with Home Alive, it's very clear what's happening. You don't have any augmentation for your Olaf. And as a whole, Valdas, in game two, I was excited. I was hyped. I'm starting to get less hyped. I'm starting to get worried. I'm starting to fear that we might actually see the result that many of us expected coming into today, which is just Domo Kia straight up outclassing in every single yeah. aspect. Well, at least some deaf fans will be happy that potentially his Jinx doesn't have to see another loss. Oh man, um, how are you going to do him like that? That's you know, of <laughs> course, no guarantee that they're going to lose. Just saying, 
No, no, you know, I get just, it. Just saying. I get it. I get the it. The Jinx doesn't get played. He plays in Ezreal, so it's his third AD carry of the night, actually. He started with Tristana, went to Jinx, and now to Ezreal. He's trying to figure out what to do oh in these God. fights because it's been rough for him. Zoe comes through. It's going to be the Yumi, isn't it? They've played this before, Valdez, and there is an Olaf on your team. How about, how about Cho'Gath bot? Yep. Yep. Yep, there it is. Yep, 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 yep. It's happening. And we're going to have the GP okay. in but the top lane. What you can do is, this is the power of the Gragas. What you can do is Hanwha Life is, and I think that's also why they went for GP here, as opposed to something where you're like 100% certain that you're going to have a good matchup in the Gragas or outscale him to a certain extent, which a GP will do. But if Hanwha Life now pick up a really, really aggressive champion into the Gangplank, you can be very unhappy. Yeah. And I would love to see that. I would be very... No, they nope. don't. Nope. Okay. You know, our production was on point. They had the camera on Gragas, and now they're like, oh, oh uh, I guess they're not going to do that, that uh, potential flex. So let's uh, change it to Vista real quick. Um, nope. Nope, nope. Yeah, no, production no, had the reads, we had the reads, but Hama Life is not going to take the read. They're not going to take the flex. They are going to play the Gragas into the GP. They are going to keep it this way and put Leona into the bottom side alongside Ezreal up against Santa Joga. Uh, yeah. Um, I see a late game draw for Dumb and Kia, and I'm like, well, um, I guess we, we know who's going to go to funds, and it's so depressing because I want more games, right? We all love League of Legends. Everyone at home is like, I, how are we getting excited for Chovy? Understandably, he's an insane player. Hanwha Life, I think, even if this becomes a 3-0, we're way better today than I expected. I think the cohesiveness isn't there, but it's not the Hanwha Life that we saw leading up to playoffs. It's not the Hanwha Life that we saw play against Nongshim, where it just felt like Luster, and it was literally just Chovy trying to drag them uh, into the next round. I feel like the team as a whole has leveled up, but that's, you can't just level up, you need to evolve, right? You need to get your evolution right now within this series, within yeah. this very game, or you're just out, because Damon Kia is too good. They are kind of on the next level, and we we have kind of said that Hamalite need to figure out a way to dismantle this team Unfortunately, looking at this draft, we're kind of liking Damon Kia once again, especially because, once again, it plays white right into their wheelhouse. So, you know, maybe have a life, they can get something going early. Maybe Arthur will look a little bit more proactive on the Olaf, maybe get his lanes even farther ahead, and maybe we can see Hama life from ahead, try to shore up their macro, not make any too many mistakes, keep their vision in line, and not get caught out like they did in game two. And maybe then we will have an even game. But if that doesn't happen, we might just be seeing the 3-0. I want more games. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a simple man. If I can have more League of Legends, and I'm like, yes, I, w I would like more League of Legends. That's great. Uh, but I think in this scenario, with this draft, what you're going to be looking for is Arthur needs to, one, make sure that he gets the punish on the Gangplank on top. If you don't punish Gangplank, you're in a heap of trouble. And pr preferably get Chovy or Death Fat to the point where they can have a bigger impact on the game that they've been able to have thus far, right? Because if you don't satisfy both those solutions, I'd be worried that either Khan is gonna just carry the late game regardless, combined with this uh, stalling potential that Damwon Kia has, because we know how good they are at stalling out games and are just playing defensively. Um, so go in here. Okay, well the Mystic shot is going to miss and now with the Aftershock down, Vista takes a bunch of damage on the backside, trying to be very proactive in the trades here in the lane. That's, they just pod one, oh my god, it's, mm, it's. <laughs> <laughs> you okay, Chronic oh. Blur? We got another engage here, but uh, again, this is Santa Chogat, their sustain in lane is, is pretty nuts. So this okay. is, their sustain in lane is insane. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, which which allows you, again, he's hit every single one besides <laughs> the zoning one. And you see they're already full health. So not only is trading evenly really good here, because if you trade evenly, you win just by the virtue of your sustain. But Senna's level one, especially with Glacial Auckland, is really, really strong as well. And you can see they don't care about trading, even though they're a level down, because they know that the moment they get back in lane, Shogaf going to sustain up easy peasy with his passive. Ghost throws a couple of Qs and is fine as well. 
And this is one of your avenues, right, where you do need to pressure as Hanwha Life. If Arthur can come bot side, maybe bait Kane into making a play, find a counter gank, right, lock him down, throw some axes, a reckless swing left and right, then you can start looking towards a possible angle for Hanwha Life. But otherwise, I, it's, it's again, it's not even just the drafts and like saying like, ah, you know, the Olaf scaling is not great, but the rest of the team is pretty decent. It's just... Ooh. Yeah, that's all. Sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Continue. I'm, no, no, no. That, that was necessary. I'm so glad. Just a little sound. Yeah. It, it needs to be said, you know? It hurts us every time, and um, we need to pay attention to that. But having seen this game, Domal Key just win late. Oh, boy. No silence comes in, so Deft is actually able to hop out of there. Does have to use his flash, so they trade flashes. This does mean that Arthur is going to start on the Rift Herald with the bottom lane of Hama Life rotating, and he will be able to pick that up. It's a two for one uh, in terms of summoners, though. So this is a win for Hanwha Life. It's not a big win, uh, but it's one you'll take regardless because it allows um, Deft to still play fairly decently forward because he is, of course, Asriel, right? He doesn't really care as much. He has his uh, uh, the ability to use his Arcane Shift, and this gets you double scuttle. Arthur made great use of the fact that Canyon showed his, vis uh, his face on both side, didn't actually turn that into a kill to get himself an early game lead. Now clears out the top side. Scuttle can move from top to bottom. A fresh back from Deft and Vista. If they can shove in the wave, you can press up that first turret because, uh, yeah, like I said, you need an early game lead. I don't even think your comp necessarily dictates it, but it's just otherwise you're not going to win against Damon Kia. I just don't see it happening. If you go in on even footing, I, I don't see it. Yeah, that is true. Uh, Jovi, you, you saw he was trying to freeze the lane here in front of his tower, but Showmaker just took a little bit of extra time to stick around, push him underneath the turret. Just Chovy doing Chovy things with his lane control. And uh, I want to point out another cool part of this duo in the bottom lane uh, with the Seraphine, or not the Seraphine, the Senna, uh, Chogath. The Chogath goes teleport, takes the unsealed spellbook, so we could have Feast and Smite on your support. Alongside of Canyon. I think Beryl is also going for Everfrost. Oh, he's going AP. <laughs> that's, oh my god, that's so, your pressure on like level 6 becomes so insane, because if yeah. you ever hit a single root or knock up, the enemy just dies. And you have Everfrost, like you have knock up, Everfrost, Senna root. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It, it, it's great in the lane. It's great in the late game. For the reasons I just mentioned, um, you know, the, the Chogath is getting all the farm, he's getting all the feast stacks, you know, all that good stuff. It's not a normal s support troll Chogath, you know, it's a, a, a different beast with the, Sarah, the Senna, of course. So, going to be very excited to see how this one plays out. I was a, a Chogath fan myself. We all seem to be sir, here. If, yeah. you'd, uh, <laughs> if you'd like. And, uh, you know, of course, it's going to be a little bit annoying for him to CS up against the Ezreal, but he'll be okay. And it's not like they're going anywhere from this lane, so that's totally fine. As we're seeing Support Cho'Gath, this is the first time that Support Cho'Gath has been played. Now, again, this is with the Fasting Senna, so is it truly a Support Cho'Gath? I'm, I'm just surprised we had, like, 50 games of Jungle Cho'Gath. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, we have. <laughs> LCK a, has a long history. Yeah, I know. But that's, <laughs> still, that's a lot of games, though. That's uh, that's 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 a stat that I uh, I didn't expect. That, yeah, that's um, not quite the amount of games that Deft had, not quite the win rate, but a similar respect has been paid to Ghost, his Senna, throughout the entirety. Uh, oh, what? What? How did he do that? He got it with the auto, and he outsmites Arthur. I guess <laughs> he, he froze the thumbs up Teemo. Did he have? Wait, I guess he might. He must have had Smite. He, he must, must have, have had Smite. Oh my! It just looked like an auto, but he must have had Smite with the unsealed spellbook. Um, you know, everyone. You know what? He just did that with his auto. Everyone right? at home. <laughs> uh, Showmaker heard you go. Uh, that makes a lot more listen, sense. Okay. There's, listen, there's there's a mid lane gap here, right? Like everyone's like, come on, it's it's Jovi. Uh, Showmaker is okay, but and Jovi like, nah, man. I I got this Drake, easy peasy, and this is. <laughs> So this is so insane for so many reasons because it allows you to 
Pick away an early Drake from Humble Life, which I think they need. I think they need to snowball early for m the reasons we already mentioned coming into this game. Secondly, you will have a relevant Rift, so if you're somehow able to pick up one or two extra dra uh, Drakes, you might be threatening a possible Soul. Um, and also, this is a devastating blow to the mantle of Hanwha Life. Like, this is the type of stuff that gets in your head, right? Like, you, you have the free Drake. It's, it's the freest objective in the world for you. There's no contest coming through. And then you see Zoe pop over that wall, and Arthur must have already like, oh no, oh no, no man, come on, don't, don't do that to me. And you know, he, he's up a level, right? He's the mid laner of the jungler, he so was? it's rough. It's rough, rough time for junglers everywhere. At Listen, this is a this is a Senna and, and Gangplank composition, and they got Drake. Uh, I'm pretty sure Canyon's just gonna like get Mountain or get Rift Herald now? I don't know if they yeah. can be on time. Well, Feast is available. This is here. And yes, as you mentioned, the Feast is here. But Ghost and Showmaker also around. The Collapse is coming in. Depth is a little bit late, but so is Ghost. It's going to be three on two. And I think with the Feast, although if they have the Eye and then the Feast, they should be good. But the Smite, no! It goes the way of Arthur! And that's going to be the cast now! We do have Barrel picking up the kill onto the Leona with his own Feast. Wish he had that for the uh, for the Rift Herald. That's a ton of damage now coming out from Death, but that is a huge steal from the side of Humble Life. Super big there because this kind of tilts back the favor. They already had the Golden Leader. Now they'll be able to pick up two kills off of getting fed yet again with a critical smile. That that's payback right there. That's you stole my dragon. I'll steal your Rift Herald, and it creates a scenario where possibly Humble Life can actually find uh, some early game pressure here. Ah, oh, no, they don't. Okay. That was a little bit and scary. I hope we get to see a replay of that because both Morgan's cask as well as Chovy's gravity that was so beautiful there. I was it was really, really nice to see that Hanwha Life still not afraid to pull the trigger. And I mentioned earlier maybe they got the they still got into the heads. So far, so good. Seems okay, you know. But again, you know, it, it's a little bit of a We'll have to wait and see because we have seen Humble Life get ahead early and then kind of get out macroed in the mid game. But again, this is a gr this is a great start for Humble Life, so you don't want to take that away from them. And this is this fight once again. And so this, yeah, it's just, I don't know why. Wait, you have these. I know. Um, and that's that's why it's so baffling to see that that gravity field that keeps both Ghost and Show make it completely away from the fight. Really, really nicely done. As uh, in the end, the uh, sustain of Orange combined with Ghost's heal is enough to keep him alive there. Uh, but I imagine that they made the call to save Feast specifically so that they could win the fight afterwards. Because I do think if you Feast there and you get the Herald, you might still lose the team fight. Because there was a um, <laughs> <laughs> that was an advantage in prior. There's both Showmaker and Chovy take a well synchronized nap. Yeah. Although I guess a, little bit sleepy. a stun is not the same as, as being asleep, but you get knocked out and the other person sleeps. Kind of yeah, works. It's like kind of similar. Yeah. Getting knocked Close out. Enough. I mean, it's really bad for your brain. Though. Oh, this is a big rotation. How many are thinking about engaging here, but actually they are going to have to flash away as the bubble will force the Ragnarok. Arthur not messing around here, obviously. Just going to run away from that one. And this does mean that Tovi should be able to pick up one plate at least. Teleport is available for Showmaker if he chooses to do so, but uh, we'll just run back to the lane. Going to give a plate over to Chovy as well as lose a whole wave, which is not where you want to be. Never mind. Picks up a little bit. Uh, ooh, if that hits, uh, Chovy's dead. But uh, it doesn't hit as Khan goes in here. Still around is Canyon as Arthur is trying to run at the mid lane as fast as possible. The damage does not come through from Showmaker, so Chovy will be fine. This is, you know, all generally pretty good news for the side of Hamal Life. I mean, he still has the Rift Herald here, and it looks like Arthur wants to drop it in the top lane. I'm again, I'm super impressed with Arthur. If they can pull up this dive and get first turbo, that's amazing for them. Okay, well, we have the ultimate coming out here. That's a ton of damage on Akon, but the Senna ultimate helps once again. Teleports come in, and Khan is still alive somehow. Arthur looking for the kill, and he is going to be able to pick it up. As with the Chaos Storm still in, but the Conquering Smite. Now doing a lot of damage here to Arthur as the sleep will come in and the rest of the team finally comes over and helps out Arthur, who did get a lot of fun done, but he did not drop the Rift Herald. 
Oh, that is good for Hanwha Life. As you mentioned, it would have been amazing if they got the Rift Herald, maybe got the first turret block. But here we are seeing the fact that, I, I was pointing it out earlier, Damwon Kia going for a really greedy draft and kind of winning the early game. But ever since that still came through, Hanwha Life have been able to swap the tempo around and keep Damwon Kia on the back foot. Gangplank notoriously vulnerable to dives. Khan tries to ultimate the wave and stay alive through that. But then the subsequent play by Hanwha Life, really nicely done. Not enough capitalization with just Showmaker teleporting in and the rest of Damon Kia not being close enough. And this is a comfortable 2k gold lead. If they can also pick up the Drake and keep this tempo up, I would be very happy with Hanwha Life. This is the problem though. We've said that two times before. Yes. And two times did not come to fruition as that is an unfortunate Rift Herald. <laughs> There she goes. Sally's just uh, wandering down the lane. Now again, of course, Arthur will come up here. Khan is getting very aggressive, trying to deny this. And he does do a nice amount of damage to Morgan, but he's got to be careful. We got another play on the mid lane, though, as the sleep will come in, but that should definitely be enough damage. And that will be the kill. On to Jovi. Here comes Vista as Khan dies in the top lane. Vista and Depth here looking to turn around this play. But Cannon will be able to survive, but so much damage being done up in the top side. And that is the first turret block going over to Hanwha Life. This is the first time this series we've seen the gold lead actually balloon. Um, I, I thought uh, on the mini I was like, is Ghost just soloing Drake? I will actually start it up now, and with Daryl there, they should be fine. Cannon yeah. also there to secure it. And in the end, what we see here is Hanwha Life just piling on top of Khan, which you need to do with this Gangplank. Um, because we've seen what can happen if you just leave him alone in the lane and scale, so I'm happy with the punish. It's just, again, a question of is this worth it, yes or no. 3k gold is great, but two drakes were giving over to Dom one Kia as here Khan tries to clear the wave, has a really nice sidestep and stays alive way longer thanks to the Senna shield. But I think due to the teleport from Chovy, there's no way that you actually outplay this anymore. If he could have found the sidestep there, uh, he would have stayed alive for like half a second longer and Arthur would have just autoed him. Arthur, though, who plays this beautifully, if he doesn't dodge that paddle star, um, he dies early, and then maybe Show Waker can path towards the bot side. Yeah. Khan, again, uh, really nice orange there, sidestep, plays this as well as uh, you basically can mechanically. But the real problem, of course, is that he goes in earlier there to try and yeah. punish Morgan, uh, abuses that trading window uh, a little bit too enthusiastically. This is just Canyon walking up bear slapping into a bubble. Uh, not a lot more to, to say about that one. As then a nice ultimate from Vista, um, but no actual damage, right? So Kayan can just flash out after the Xenos Blade lands, and they loop around here, turn this into a dragon. And that's why I'm like, I'm still on the fence about whether or not this is really enough for Hanwha Life, because two Drakes means that gold is nice, items are good, but it's not a win shoot again generally in the current meta. It's a soul, it's dragons, right? Or Baron, possibly, but trying to take Baron against. Um, I guess free smites because Showmaker uh, also has smites, and then Barrel has two smites in Feast and Smite, and then you oh. smite Showmaker though. Thank thankfully he had the W, but I don't think it's going to matter. This is 3v1, and Showmaker will die. You always got to be looking for punishes onto Zoe, who portal jump willy nilly. We saw that there as three members collapse and take him out. And now take a look at the top lane. Khan is down two levels. And Arthur is coming up here again. He's ready to punish. Khan again getting caught here. Um, uh, oh, Arthur? Going the other way? Uh, um, well, um, Khan? <laughs> it's almost like he's looking frustrated. Morgan's just laughing at him. The AP Gragas is just dunking the GP after getting a lot of help, of course, but that is just going to be something you are milking for a lot if Khan keeps going in there. It's also interesting that Khan has gone for the Divine Sunderer build. Recently, we've seen a lot more of the uh, Shield Bow and Essence Reaver builds, uh, which still provide a lot of survivability and conjunction to having, in my opinion, a little bit more reliable damage. You will have a little bit more effective help with this Divine Sunderer, and it spikes early nicely. So from a deficit, I kind of get it, but I still would have preferred to see the shield, especially because the scaling on that build just feels really, really good. Fortunately for uh, Damwon Kia, they will still have more than enough damage with a Showmaker that has two kills and a Ghost that is on his trademark Senna. But Hanwha Life, more so than the other two games, has actually been able to keep the tempo high. However, I draw your attention to the gold league. It's still 3k. That number needs to become bigger, Valdas, because otherwise, like, clock, uh, like clockwork, I'm going to give you what happens. It's all looking good. Humble Life make one mistake <laughs> at like 25 minutes, and then in the next six minutes, Double Kia just win the game.
Barrel hits a knock up on a Jovi and just flash feasts him, and it's like, oh, well. Yeah, for example. <laughs> There's many of those. Bar Barrel's actually the counter to Jovi. We figured it out. What I am happy to see, though, is that, again, the entirety of Hanwha Life is playing well. It's not just the Chovy show. We see Morgan and Arthur having amazing games here. Yeah, it's very true. And that's what you need. That's what Dalman have, right? So, got a counter. Fire with fire. You can see that Dalman this time around will play it uh, quite respectfully. Just going to feast down Shelly. Actually, that was Shirley. Second ref, Daryl Tier, going to be taken down. And Dalman just, just trying not to bleed as much as they already have here and cut their losses. One issue that Dalman might also run into as they get later into the game is that engaging onto the Hanwha life comp is actually decently hard due to the lack of reliable engage, right? Um, you're more looking at picks, you're looking at Zoe bubbles and possibly can't throw an ultimate behind the team so that they can't kite back. But otherwise, uh, especially with Hanwha Live not actually having a decent sized lead going into this. Morgan's disengage is really strong. Chovy is a victor. Deft is an Ezreal, right? Those two picks love just hiding back, playing in the back line, just poking away and poking away and punishing the opponent's lack of engage. Um, and, I mean, Deft, you know, he really wants to hit those item spikes. Who needs boots? I'm just, I'm just yeah. gonna get my money <laughs> and my essence, Reeve. I don't care. You just get the items you can afford. You just, uh... If that means you're not getting boots, and you gotta squeeze out your two item spike, then you go ahead and do that. Oh boy, Everfrost lands, and this is what I was talking about! I I summoned it! Barrel just beast down Chovy, and it's just like clockwork. Where have we seen this before? Game one, game two, and now game three. And Dalmon Kia now with no Chovy. You can see they are posturing here onto this Drake. They don't have a feast but they're still in a pretty good spot. Canyon has to be careful. That's a really nice cast, and they're not going to be able to kill Canyon somehow, some way. And Zoe in the back side is just going to kill the Ezreal. And now that's easily going to be this Drake going the way of Dob one. Wait, did Death die to Wolves? I thought he was fine. I don't... Valdanos, teach me your powers. You summoned the exact moment you were talking about. It's literally an Everfrost into a flash forward with a feast. And Damon Kia, now they're at sword point, and that completely flips what we were saying earlier on its head, because as Home Alive, you can't afford to play nicely, kite back kite uh, type of team fights and compositions. You need to be on that objective. Just watch. Chovy's so far up the lane. It's the Glacial Augment into Showmaker actually hitting the roots. Everything gets thrown down on top of that big, uh, big victor that otherwise could have provided so much backline threat and be a really big problem. And here it feels like Canyon is overstepping. Watch Deft. But yet Look. again, no, I want, no, no, no. Is it, is it Ignite? I think it's Ignite. I, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to. No, no okay, it, it wasn't Ignite. ignite. It I, I was okay, about okay, to okay. say, it would be so good. <laughs> okay, all uh, right. He lives, right? or he, he tries to live with the sustain, and it's actually the Ignite that kills him. Um, it wouldn't have mattered, though, because the grand scheme of the, uh, or, or the, the, the real kicker there is that they lose to Drake, and we said this all starts with Showmaker stealing that first Drake. That's literally what enables this, right? Because now, every four to five minutes, you need to be at the Dragon Pit as Humble Life. You have no option. If you give Soul to this team, it's over. Uh, you're just not allowed uh... to. Uh, <laughs> uh, what? Is he backing? Has he backed? Uh, no, he's actually, okay. He's gonna get the speed boost and just <laughs> run away. <laughs> he's just sprinting so, away. Very sneaky gangplank. I didn't know pirates isn't, were that cool. Isn't this commando gangplank as well? Isn't this like yes. special ups? Wow. Yes, it is. It makes what, sense. what a role player. Unbelievable <laughs> con. I love it. It's funny because he is a role player on the Steam. <laughs> um, <laughs> gotta love it. He's uh, he's not had the most fun early game, but he's he's providing us with some entertainment here. That is certainly his role. And of course, it's not over for Hanwha Life. They still have a gold lead. They still have a team composition that can fight really well. But it's in the context of this game. Uh, well, the time's uh, mm, nah. I'm I'm starting to lose faith. I want to see five games, but it needs to be a banger of a team fight for Hanwha Life, and not just one. Possibly two, three, four in a row. Because you need to get Drake, then you need to also win the Baron fight, then you also need to make sure that you actually get through the base, and then you need to end the game. Unless you can combine all of those into oh. one. 
Shoemaker with the off angle tricking Vista, who went for the blind solar flare. That's where we're at. I'm saying sentences like that because these two <laughs> teams are just so good. There, there's no objective. It's fine. And mm -hmm. um, again, if this is a 3 0, I'm really glad. Like game one, it felt like it would be a stompy 3 0. But even if Dom and Kia win this game, which uh, I'm going to go out on a limp and say that they will, just from like how insane this team is, Hanwha Life have actually leveled up within this series. I think that. You can have crit levy criticisms towards the draft that they had in game number two, but it was a very clear plan behind it, right? They actually played the early game really well. They played the game really uh, well here. Um, Morgan and Arthur have been playing insanely well, considering their lackluster performance against Nongshim, although I guess Arthur didn't actually have a lackluster performance because he played one game and got POG. So <laughs> gotta gotta say, take my words back on that one. But you know what I mean, right? Like as a whole, the team feels like they're at the very least matching up to Dumb One Kia early, and that's more than a lot of other teams can say. Yeah, it's very true. I just wish that, you know, the one thing I don't want to happen is, okay, a minute until the next streak, 30 seconds comes around, somebody's out here farming in the mid lane, they get rooted and die because of lack of vision, because of lack of positioning. It's what we saw a couple of games already. I just don't want that to happen. I want Hanwha Life to group up, Try to front to back. You've got Leona Gragas, put them in the front. You have really insane scaling damage with your Victor and Ezreal. Make something of it. Don't die. Get a good team fight in and take a mountain Drake and make this a game. Because if you get caught and this turns into a 5v4 and Dom one just take another Baron for free, I might just lose my mind. <laughs> we, don't want, we don't want that, guys. Yeah. We don't want to lose our uh, double threat caster. That made us all. Very, very sad. I'd, I'd, I'd rather not lose both Velvets and the Veldanalyst mm. in one fell swoop. Pryo yeah. now being attempted to... Uh, I found it. And this is the luxury that Dom and Kia have. They don't need to go for Drake. They can just go for Baron if Hanwha Life overcommit. Okay. Spotted here in the brush. And the thing is, you know, in terms of consistent damage on the side of Dom1, they do have scaling threats. The Senna, the Gangplank. But if Zoe's not hitting her stuff and she gets kind of zoned away, you know, the, 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 the choke out as well. We're going to have to see some pop-off damage from, I think, Showmaker in some of these team fights because the rest of the team alone might not be enough. Let's see some barrels, too, from Khan as they're slowly tipping away here. Barrel looking to zone them out as this dragon is getting closer and closer to the feast range. That's a perfect timing. As now the CC comes in and they take down the Gragas, but immediately Togoth goes down. But look at the follow-up damage that comes out. Death is going to be totally zoned away. And now he doesn't have a true shot barrage either. No flash, no heal. The rest of Hobble Life is too low. And that's going to be another lost team fight. And the Mountain Soul going the way of Dom One Kia 25 minutes into the game. And Showmaker's not done. He's looking for more. There's the Everfrost. Do we have a follow up? Can you get away from Canyon, who actually does have to be careful? Still a lot of damage left on the rift, but Dom One are not scared. They are still chasing them down. And they can, right? The sustained damage that they have is insane. They have the healing from Ghost, keeping them alive. Vista has dodged so many sleepy trouble bubbles, but at one point it's got to end, right? And in the end, no uh, more kills will be found by Damon Kia, but the real damage, that's that's all. 25 minutes yep. in. Uh, what do you do, fellas? I don't know. I, I legitimately don't know because we see Dom and Kia get into positions like this every single time. This time it's Showmaker with a heroic steal early on in the game to just get them on this trajectory. And then Hanwha Life not able to contest any of the other Drakes. And it's Beryl flashing for or going forward here. Yet yeah, flashing forward yet again. Uh, just the land CC chain immediately blow up Morgan. And then that's so much damage gone. Because that's no cask, right? This is an yeah. AP Gragas. Like, if he hits a cask, that backline is half health. And but <laughs> Beryl's playing like Cho'Gath. Like, he's playing simultaneously an engage support like he normally does. But then yeah. he's also the biggest boy, and he, like, one-taps people. And he has Zonia's. So <laughs> if he ever gets under threat, he, he knows he's got the backup, and he has the items to stick around in a sustained team fight. Depth was zoned out the entire fight. I mean, there was the 
Gangplank ultimate right on top of him. Kind of barrage. Then he ate, I think, a, a barrel or, or maybe it was just the silence from the Cho'Gath. And then he hit a massive paddle star right in the face. And that's when he was just like, okay, guys, I, I can't fight. I'm just gone. No Ezreal means so much less damage in these team fights. And uh, again, as you mentioned, it all starts with the pick, but then the follow up damage is just so clean from Dom1. And what we're seeing there from Khan as well, because we saw some of his early barrel hits. This is not the big crit barrels that you'd expect from a divine sh or for uh, from a uh, shield bow and an uh, essence reaver gangplank, right? But he does have way more effective help, and you can see that Khan can actually move up a lot more there, go for more risky barrier angles, uh, and still have the utility of say his ultimate or the barrels procking a big slow on enemy of the backline carries and then he can just run up right with Sterex and Divine Sunder you are actually decently tanky you have Ghost keeping you topped up whenever you feel like it and now Domon Kia what do you not like as poke uh, is shields and if the enemy team has just an entire regenerating shield that they can always have against your poke it's following the plan yet again Valvus I feel like we're just barreling towards the inevitable future of Domon Kia winning like 18 fight and then just ending the game. Yeah, I mean, that seems like the most it likely scenario at this point, but we'll have to wait and see what Hama Life have in store. Uh, it's got to be better than the last team fight we saw. I wanted a straight up team fight. I got it. Didn't really answer um, my question, though, if they could actually win one. And it is still possible as Humble Life, but you need the slow fight. You need the kite back. Oh. Nope. So LeFlair is now down. Morgan is actually being run down by an Udir at the moment. He is going to Everfrost, being denied the body slam over the wall. It's a lot of damage coming in. Canyon gets a bit low. But here we go, the engage again, and Chovy gets caught in the front line as Beryl just makes mincemeat of the victor once again. And that's gonna be Baron, you would have to imagine, even with Arthur available, 5v3, I don't think you can stop him. League of Legends is a game where, <laughs> you know, two teams kind of fight for 30 minutes and then Damon Kia wins the game. What can you do? Every single time they find an angle, this time it's Canyon uh, able to just keep Morgan there for long enough. Body blocks, his body slam over the wall. Khan comes as well. And then the sandwich comes in. The Baron gets started up. All right, oh let's see it. Let's see it. Nope. You know, it was actually close. <laughs> but you can't do those steals with the True Shot Barrage nowadays. It's much, much more difficult. But he does have to try in that scenario. I do appreciate Jonas Strong really leaving us in suspense. You know, like, yeah. oh, does he get it? Does That's he why get he's the it? best observer. He is. World. Uh, yeah. As good as Dom <laughs> PR, are they really as good as Jonas Strong? We don't know. I don't know. They get forced in there, and this is the lockdown. Canyon literally flash bear slaps across the wall just after he sets up this initial play. Yeah. And you can look at this and go, like, is this really necessary? And it's. It's one. Everything works, right? The paddle star to make sure that you block it away. And Don Monkia, they've heard the tales of Jovi, oh. and they're not interested. I mean, they're literally just eating him for dinner at this point in time. They picked the Cho'Gath. I love the symbolism. Great work, Don Monkia. And uh, now you're going up against the Baron. The Elder is about to spawn, by the way, in 25 seconds. Can you do anything? That is the question that remains to be answered. Look at Toby, he's desperate to try to get damage onto the Cho'Gath here. No knockup. This Dom one, you see Khan, he is back in the game, level 16. And Showmaker is just insane as well. He's hitting everything and he's zoning everybody on the side of Hamalife away. As they are now trying to barrel down mid lane and then wrap around into the Elder Pit. As, okay, you know, casually just going to take the damage there. Dev now has to flash away from that one. Double Kia, they are not messing around here tonight. It's looking like a 3-0. We'll see what Dev can do. He's trying to get off the ghost, but nope. He's going to be taken down, and at least they kill the Udir because if they didn't get anyone, that would have just been the saddest end to this series. Khan isn't even fighting in the fight. It's a 4v5! <laughs> <laughs> yep, see you, Vista. TP's coming in. And it actually will get off, but Khan says, you know what? I've had enough of this game. I died three times. 
and I'm just gonna take you down now. Or will he? That's the question, will he? Morgan's trying to get the kill. He has quick blades. Okay, well, everybody else is dead. And now they're just barreling down the bottom side here with the Baron. And, well, they're just gonna go for the Elder Drake. Thought they had taken it, but uh... I just assumed they'd take everything. They're not gonna end the game. They will take the same play onto the Elder. Listen, it's fine. You know, if this is just so the comeback from Hanwha Life is gonna be even better. That's, that's, the, <laughs> that's the setup here. I haven't quite figured out how they're going to deal with Elder Drake. That, that, that one is, um, is still... Good question. Uh, yeah, that, that one's kind of escaping me at the moment, but I'm, I'm sure it's possible as... Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, 1287, he has the smite, <laughs> and also there's, Udir has smite. There's like three. Feral might be able to get smite. <laughs> there's like three K true damage to an objective. You yeah. can't flip it, ever. You can't. I mean, your your only option really is to kill them. You have to get kills. You have to catch someone. Maybe Ghost, you know, the, the soft underbelly of the team. Maybe it's Canyon. Maybe they've caught him. They get onto Canyon, but immediately the Ezreal just goes away and Canyon is totally fine. He has the mountain, so that's a very great follow-up engage here from Morgan, but unfortunately they don't have the damage to get through this gigantic Shogun. See you later. There's the ace, and that is the 3-0 from Damwon Kia over Hanwha Life Esports tonight. This team is insane, and we say it again and again, and it feels <laughs> like it gets boring sometimes, because what do you do? There's they're inevitable. <laughs> the too good barrel is a giant, and he's just. <laughs> oh my god, Damwon Kia. It has been a long time since we have seen a team look this dominant within the LCK. They're going for more. Death dies again. That's like four times in a row. Yep, 0 4. That's how he'll end this series. Canyon Nonchalant will take the headset off. And Damwon Kia will reiterate in everybody mind, everybody's minds that they are in fact the team to beat. Hama Life actually play decently. Say what you want about the drafts. Some of the getting caught moments were unfortunate, but they played good League of Legends. They got ahead multiple games in a row and they still were not able to overcome the might, the monster that is Damwon Kia. Yeah, this is, this is not Hanwha, uh, Hanwha Life losing. Uh, as said, I think the first game there is a lot of criticism that can be levied towards that angle, but they went for a different approach. Outside of that, there were so many moments where a lesser team would have lost. Chovy flashing in, right? Trying to blow up Ghost. Um, the leads they were able to find again and again in game number two, game number three. But in the end, it doesn't matter. Domon Kia is too good. They're, if there is an angle, they'll find it. If there is a catch possible, they'll find it. If there is an objective to be stolen like five minutes into the game, meaning that leads to like a soul, uh, you can't explain it, right? It's just, it's too much. It's too clean. <laughs> it's too good. Damon goes in, <laughs> takes a win. You can't explain that. They do it again, 3-0 tonight. Hama Life got multiple leads, it didn't matter. They tried multiple different comps, didn't matter. They got so far ahead in that third game as well. Um, and they had some really great scaling, it still didn't matter. Showmaker, it's all of these X factors. Every single player on the side of Dom1 had a really awesome series tonight. Uh, you know, Khan had that little bit of a mix up in the early game of this one, this last game. But other than that, pretty pristine from their side. You know what the irony was? I actually feel like Canyon was the most invisible member on Dom1 Kia tonight. And yeah. <laughs> not even because he was bad, but just, uh, it was like either Canyon or Khan, but even they played insane. Because yes, Khan's uh, early game here was a little suspect, right? He got he got caught out a couple of times, which can Greedy. happen yeah. as uh, the gangplank. But then you see like later in those fights, once he has his free item spike, he plays incredibly well. He baits in the enemy team, his ultimates are on point. He provides so much utility for his team. The timing of everything, as you mentioned, is just so pristine as well, because like right as they're coming in, he waits, waits, waits. Cannon Barrage is perfect. The follow-up engage from Beryl, perfect. Every, everything coming together to get the Banshee's Veil off of Chovy, flashing over the wall, the Everfrost roots onto Chovy, and then the Nom Nom, the Feast onto him. 
And it, it's all just like art that we're watching. With Dom and Kia, the beautiful is it's it's predictable yet inevitable. Because you the, you we make the calls, right? And then normally you make the calls as a cast, and sometimes it's funny, you curse it, sometimes it does happen. But with Dom and Kia, it feels like you can lay out the perfect scenario for that comp, and they'll just do it. Yeah. I mean, they they don't really make too many mistakes. That's the thing about this team. They're just too clean. As in fact, the smite was here. Auto smite. See you later. It's not even a level up here. He's actually just <laughs> it's just straight up 50. Yeah. 50. This is this was the one Mormon where I was like, oh, you know what? Why didn't he feast there? But then you came up with a very reasonable explanation as to why he didn't, and it all begins to make sense, even though they lost the fight. Oh man. This was again a, a very one-sided kind of early game from Hanwalai. They were taking advantage of the Gangplank. They were pushing all the buttons that they needed to early on, and it still wasn't enough. I will remain a staunch defender of this uh, lineup of Hanwalai. I think that um, we've seen that their early game has gotten so much better. Morgan and Arthur having great games here. The fact that in the end it's not enough doesn't take away from uh, really a growing performance from this team in the last couple weeks of the LCK combined with a decent performance here in playoffs. Huh. It's still just a 3-0, Valdez. It... Yeah, all of, all of these highlights that we're watching as well, it's just what we were talking about. Like, watch this, the Paddle Star, the Root comes in with the Everfrost, the Flash over the wall, Chovy dies. And, and we're, we're asking for people not to get caught, but it's really difficult because the mechanics are, are all there and also the teamwork from Dawan Kia. They never really mix anything up and they're always playing as a five-man unit. These angles as well, right? What other team consistently finds these insane angles? Here you think, oh, Kenyon gets caught? No, he doesn't. Uh, he, he's completely fine. And yeah. these kind of moments happen so often for Dawan Kia that it, as other teams, it's got to be disheartening as well because every time you feel like you have find an angle, uh, you know you're just a single mistake away from losing every advantage that you have up until that point. And that's the, that's the problem with playing, like, how consistent can people be? Yeah. Let's listen in, I, I want to hear what they say. Sorry about how they got the Ezreal. Go, go to the bottom side here. <laughs> Showmaker's mic oh, kind of going in and out, but... Oh, that's tough. Oh, uh, calm giggle, that's always good. <laughs> yeah. That always makes me happy. Maybe he was talking about <laughs> Even Kenyon is like... He's, he's telling him to dance. Fucking... He's like, <laughs> get in there and PM him as much as possible. Typical Showmaker. It's like, please, get in there, dance, dance! Do the dance emote! Can we get him? Can we get him? Can we get him? Oh, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get some air conditioning now. It's spring! Springtime! The finals are coming in. The most damage was actually Khan. <laughs> those cannon barrages were actually just so perfect in all those fights, so I guess that's where a lot of his damage comes from. Yeah. Um, you like that graph? I'm, Looks a lot uh, like the Game 2 graph. I don't know. I don't know, Valdez. I'm... I'm... Because... <laughs> and this is the problem with playing against Dalmon Kia, is that even if you lay out the ways that they don't win a game, it often involves them making a mistake. Um, or the enemy's hard forcing, you know, any opening that they might find. But the problem is that it feels like Double Key always knows that you're going to do that and they're one step ahead. And it's not just Canyon, right? Because I think that during the regular split, you could make an argument that some of the players were having less of moments. Showmaker wasn't always the greatest to kill by Lorking Lava. Uh, we, got, yeah. we got Ghost and Barrel that were having some rough situations. The players comes around and Double Key are look. Dare I say, as dominant as they did last year in summer. Like, their run-up wasn't as impressive, but this form? Hama Life are a really good team, right? And they just made them look really silly. Um, just snatching games away uh, in this case. We'll see who they end up facing in the finals. I'm really curious if anyone can challenge them. Will it be T1? Will it be Genji? We'll find out tomorrow. But guys, we have the analyst desk ready, so I'll hand it over to Jisun for the translation.
Thank you for pushing guys and Tama Kia picked up a very clean 3-0 win and heading to the finals. Ghost was able to play Sema this time around and it was paired up with Chuga. It was the first Chuga support in the LCK history. We have never seen this before. And there's one of the reasons, there are plenty of reasons not to set, give Sena to Ghost. One of them is Burl has such a wide champion pool, so Ghost can also always enable Burl to play any kind of unique picks. For Hana Life Esports, you saw Olaf and Victor, but I don't really think that Olaf and Victor create any synergy. Olaf, Oriana, Olaf, Zoe could have been a lot better in terms of the mid and jungle synergy. Watching a game from a stronger team, well, they do know how to play the early game with the power of Olaf, but there is a moment where they start to rot. They're, they cannot keep their strength till the early game. This kind of champions have ex termination dates, for example, you have to utilize the early lead and then you have to pass over the ball to the later carries. And Hana Life Esports team did focus on the, their late game carry, for example, like the Ezreal pick, but I was expecting Varus instead, but I think that Ezreal pick kind of tells us the story that Hana Life wanted to have the late game power as well, but still, Tamakia was just so strong. Just like other games, Hana Life Esports was able to get ahead in the early game and we figured out what was the exact point where Hana Life Esports was able to get ahead of Taman Kia. Taman Kia wanted to utilize their tempo in order to rotate towards that Herald Senna finds a reset and actually makes her way to the mid lane because she was slightly behind hidden level 6 so he won she wanted to help Showmaker push in the wave and also hit level 6 but actually Vista finds an opening to initiate this fight when Showmaker and Ghost were split it from his, their teammates and Victor was able to easily block their way with that one gravity field. So because Tamakia's uh, members couldn't have their damage carries scripted up for their team fight, there were no, there was no way for them to win that fight. Maybe Tamakia could have focused on the Leona and Olaf making their way into that Herald, so maybe they can work on those minor issues in the um, early macro decisions. But still, Tamakia was ramping up, heading towards the very end of the game, and they were able to capitalize on the um, advantage that they had with their comp. Tam and Kia, they have such a, they have a lot of abilities to push in the wave and they're so good at pushing in the mid lane. And also they have so many CCs. So Chobi wanted to stop their push so he takes a step forward because he had Liana right next to him. But Tam and Kia had too many crowd control. Their chain CC was so strong. So even Leona could not save his life and then Ghost was able to save Burl with his ultimate and then Canyon is also saved by Ghost with his Q heal. And then Zoe was also able to land their abilities on Ezreal and then clean up the kill. Showmaker's Zoe is something else for sure. Tamang Kia has been picking up two trophies in a row last year and they're one step closer to making a third one in a row and Showmaker will pick up the POG on Zoe. 94.4 kill participation. He also stole away that first Drake, you know? And that was super critical because Hana Life Esports invested so hard for the Drake. Even Ezreal rotated off to that river in order to pick up that Drake, but it was actually secured by Showmaker. And then 
Because of the slow coming out from Senna, he got engaged by the rest of the Tamankia players, and it was an easy kill secured by Tamankia. And I think Tamankia can utilize a very different kind of champion picks because every different players and, and their individual players are at the best mechanical level. And unanimous POG will be showmaker for game number three. Now let's invite the POGs on the side of Tamankia. Congratulations on your win! Thank you! With this 3-0 victory, you guys are making it it's back to the finals. How are you feeling, Ghost? I didn't expect it's going to be 3-0, but I'm glad that we got 3-0. And I'm happy that we are making it back to play um finals. Yeah, I also didn't expect it's going to be a quick thrill, but yeah, thankfully we were able to win really quickly. Me too. This was an unexpected 3-0 win, and there were many games where we were falling behind early, but I'm glad that we were able to focus up and turn the game around. And Taman Kia selected Hana Life Esports as um, their opponent. Hana Life Esports had a fantastic performance around Chovis' solo care performance. So, what was your focal point preparing today's matchup? Chovi is a very talented player. So, I said fighting over to Showmaker, and the rest of the players were like focused on their own work. And Showmaker, you know, he also had this mission to play well up against Chovi. Showmaker, you did! Played so well against Chovi oh, today. How was today's match? I mean, Chovi is so good, you know? During the laning phase, it was definitely tough, but my teammates were doing a great job, so we were able to secure victory. <laughs> and bro, not only the players, but also your head coach Goma has a very long career in this best of five series. And we could see Goma on camera as well. He looked a, a little bit nervous, so what kind of communication went back and forth between the players and Goma before the match? Well, I have a bad memory, so I don't remember. Does anyone remember it? Anyone? Nothing special, I don't think so. I mean, we were just discussing our draft. Shoemaker today, in general, Hana Life Whispers was getting ahead, but Tamakia always turned the game around based on the team fights in the mid and late game. So, did you guys also discuss this uh, during the feedbacks as well? Our feedback discuss many different things, but it was also diff detailed, like, cannot really go into too much details, but it was basically, basically about, like, pointing out our mistakes and touching on some the better um, decisions. And bro, you played Chuga support, a uh, pick that was actually played in the LSC, but the first time in the LCK as a support role. So, how was um, playing support Chugas, and do you think it's going to be viable in the future as well? When I was watching LSC, I saw Senna and Chugas, and looking at their match history, they even used it in their prior matches, so we tried it in our screams as well, and it was decent. So I think we tried it for once or twice, and we wanted to opt into it right now. I mean, it was really impressive to see all your ruptures landing on the opponents, but I can't believe you only played one or two screams on it. And we had the teaser for Tom and Kia's world skin, and the fans are so amazed by this fantastic and fantastic fancy skins. Are you guys also satisfied with the with your championship skins? We are very satisfied in overall. I hope I can't wait. Ghost, I saw you nodding. Do you like it as well? Yeah, I really appreciate all the hard work from um, the um, Riot and I hope all of our friends can purchase it. Bro, what about your Leona? Yes. I saw it, and I think it's pretty cool. 
Korea and Gorilla saying, oh, I'm so jealous. So moving on, we're going to be having Genji versus T1 matchup. And the winner will be your opponent at the finals. Who do you want to face at the finals or who do you think will win tomorrow? To be honest, both of them are so strong, so it's really hard to predict, but if Jeji makes it to the finals, I'm going to be facing up against BDD for the first time at the finals, and if T1 makes it to the finals, I'll be playing up against my former coaching staff. You know, BDD used to be my good friend since the MCJ Entus days, so both of the opponents will be super cool. I think both teams are very strong, so I think we all just have to focus on our own work in order to, you know, get the win. I don't really care too much about our opponents. Either one looks okay for me. And Showmaker, who do you think will make it to the finals? I can't wait to play up against Denny and Zephyr. Come on, Kia. You guys are missing just the Spring Split title and also the MSI title. So, what's your mindset and determination for your upcoming finals? We are back to back finalists of the LCK. So, we will work hard in order to not let our fans down. I hope to pick up another trophy and fly to Iceland for the MSI. In the last split, uh, we made it to the finals and we are now back at the finals. So I hope we can show a good performance at the last stage. And Ghost, would you like to add on to that? Thankfully, you know, we were able to make it to the finals again and I have never lost in the finals so far. So we will um, work our best in order to keep that record going. And this will be the end of the interview from Ghost Pearl Showmaker from Tamakia and I'm going to toss it back to our casters. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sun, as always, for the awesome translation of the analyst desk and the interview. Good to hear that everybody from Damon is very confident. Showmaker wants to see Danny and Zeffa in the finals. We'll see if that actually happens. I'd say it's a decent chance, at least 50-50. Um, but guys, we do have the play of the day ready, so let's hop into that and take a look at who will pick it up tonight. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a CC chain, right? It's just... It has everything, you know, you, you proc, you proc the, the Banshees, you have the Flash Bear Slap, uh, you have Barrel eating people up, and then the, the ultimate in a choke point, there's nothing you can do. So Showmaker actually gets him with the Everfrost first, and then it's like the slap and the follow-up Everfrost from the Cho, and the center Root, and the Feast. So good luck trying to play into that. That's why you don't go into those corridors, I suppose, against that comp. It, it's also... The Kale Storm, like, you have to throw it to someone, and you throw it to Cho'Gath, who's just like, it doesn't yeah. matter to be it. You know, because I guess Cho'Gath is so big that the Kale Storm is, like, around, like, his chest area, and it just doesn't really bother him. He was totally it's fine. It's fine. It was, um, yeah. yeah. There, there were, I feel like there were three drafts where Dalmon Kia just solved a way out of it, and they just outplayed them tonight. They were the better team by far in this series. Now, guys... We do have a big series tomorrow. Gen G up against T1. That is going to be those two teams clashing in playoffs yet again. We'll see if Gen G can kind of overcome the curse they have in recent times. But T1 are also looking very strong in recent times. So whoever wins that will go up against Damon Kia on next Saturday, exactly a week from today. I can't wait. Uh, I think tomorrow is going to be really exciting as well. Whereas today, uh, second and third game, but definitely good. But uh, the first one was kind of what people expected coming into yeah. the series from them on Kia and the form that they were in. But I think tomorrow has the opportunity and actually decent pros uh, probability of actually going all the way. I, I really want to see just more games. Yeah. I'm not ready for playoffs to be over. More, more playoff games, right? Yeah. And those two teams are really good. Um, who knows what kind of Gen.G is going to show up, right? I think a lot of people are hyped for T1 kind of ramping into playoffs where they're generally stronger with this roster that's actually winning. 
But Gen Z are very strong too. They got second in uh, uh, this entire split, so that's why they're waiting here in round two. So uh, we'll have to wait and see about that one. Of course, that will be brought to you by Atlas and Wolf for tomorrow's cast. But thank you so much again for watching, guys. It was a quick one today. But it was Dom one smashing once again, and we'll have to see what happens in the future. Make sure to watch LCK tomorrow for the second semifinals of this split. But until then, have a good night.